All right, Boone Pickens Stadium, standing room only, folks. 60,000 ready to watch the game of the day as the undefeated eighth-ranked TCU Horn Frogs come into the water to take on the undefeated 14th-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson along with my partner, Joel Klatt, and welcome to Stillwater and partner. This is going to be a oh, November man. to remember in the Big 12. Well, the conference feels a little disrespected right now. I know most of those fan bases in this uh, part of the country feel disrespected as well, but here's the best part about this November is that they're going to have a chance to prove it on the field with all of these great games starting today right here in Stillwater with TCU and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma Baylor TCU at Oklahoma Baylor TCU all of us looking forward to that ball game Oklahoma at Oklahoma State to finish this thing out there's no way in the world that the playoff committee is going to be able to disrespect this conference moving forward with all of these games being played and on the table so it's all in their hands speaking of these teams these players want it these coaches want it these fan bases want it and it starts today all right that's an exciting time in the Big 12 and I'm excited for today you you know why? You, you know why I'm excited? I know why, because you know why I'm excited. That's too. right, because, folks, we get an opportunity to watch the best player in America. Yes, he's a magician. Yes, he's a mastermind. His name, Trevon Boykin. Even opposing coaches know it. They're excited to watch him, too. Dana Holgerson with the high five third round college football. This guy is just amazing. He's got a great weapon on the outside in Josh Dotson. He can throw from all different angles. And most importantly, he's as big of a threat with his feet as anybody in the country from the quarterback position. Make no mistake about it. TCU is in the playoff hunt. They are in the Big 12 title hunt. And it all starts with number two. So coming up, can Trevon Boykin and TCU stay undefeated? It won't be easy because the Oklahoma State Cowboys are ready and willing and certainly are able. Welcome back to Fox College Football presented by K Jewelers. Stillwater, Oklahoma. Boone Pickens Stadium, the oldest stadium in the and we're ready for that man to hit the field. Time now to join the third member of our team on the sideline, Molly McGrath. Coach, you said that you can't stop Trevon Boykin, but you can try to slow him down. What do you need to see from Emmanuel Ogba in your defensive front today? Well, we've got to do a good job of running to the ball. And uh, he'll make some plays, but I feel like our guys will really run to the ball. We have to tackle well in space. You force defenses to prepare for two very different quarterbacks. What do you need to see from Rudolph and Walsh that will set them apart in this game? Well, they need to take what the defense gives us, not try to do too much. It'll be a long game. Just take what they give you and just execute. Very good luck out there, Coach. All right, thank you very much. DCU on the toss and will receive big-time matchup. The second matchup of teams 8 and 0 or better in Big 12 history. This series dating back to 1915. Oklahoma State leads it 13 to 10 with two ties and the Cowboys have won eight of the 11 meetings here in Stillwater. Perfect weather for football and we're underway as Oklahoma State sends it away. Devontae Turpin will field it inside the five yard line. Flag thrown and Turpin Crossing the 20 up to the 21. So Cavante Turpin, the freshman from Monroe, Louisiana, having a terrific season. And here comes our first call of the game. During the return, an illegal block in the back, number four of the receiving team, 10 yards from the end of the run, first down. That's Nico Small, backup safety. So a couple of things we should pay attention to when the Horn Frogs have the football. Well, they're going to be at least to start the game without their big left tackle. Halapuli Vati Vaitai, 6'6", 315. So it's going to be up to Matt Pryor out there to be matched up with a couple of very good players, including Emmanuel Ogba, one of the best defensive ends in the country, comes in with nine sacks on the year. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line for TCU. Kyle hits in the backfield. Here's Boykin to throw on first down. Sets up the screen, and that ball deflected out of his hands. Guess who? Emmanuel Agba. And, Joel, we're very disappointed. Agba left off a list that uh, he should have certainly been on. The semifinalist for the Lombardi Award. Emmanuel Agba is one of the best players in America, and he has been so 
for three seasons. 13 and a half tackles for loss, nine sacks left off that, that list. All I got to say is those voters must not be watching football. Second down and 10 of the 12. Here's Boykin firing to the far side. Intended for Dotson, incomplete. Kevin Peterson covering defensively. And that brings up third down and long for TCU. Kevin Peterson is an excellent corner. 5'11", 190. He'll be matched up against Josh Dotson most of this afternoon. That's going to be one heck of a matchup. Likely to see it again right here. So third down and 10 of the 12. Empty backfield for Boykin. TCU second in the nation to Texas Tech. And third down conversions at 54%. Oklahoma State showing blitz. Boykin with time over the middle, and it is incomplete. Intended for Aaron Green, who lined up as a wide receiver, and that ball broken up. Jordan Stearns in the vicinity. This ball was accurately thrown, actually got into the chest, and that's what you get when you got a running back out there, and there was some confusion. I don't think Aaron Green ran the right route because Josh Dotson and he were sharing the same space. Looks like Boykin wanted to go to his best receiver. Dotson wasn't able to find him. So Ethan Perry will punt out of his own end zone. Jalen McCleskey back deep at the 40. McCleskey comes up. Now back pedals. Grabs it. McCleskey turns a corner. A little bit of running room as he crosses the 40. Flag on the play. A 48-yard punt and a three-yard return. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 16 of the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. So a couple of things to pay attention to when Oklahoma State has the football. True two-quarterback system. Mason Rudolph will take the majority of the snaps. He's the passing quarterback. J.W. Walsh, the veteran, comes in. They love to run that Wildcat package with him, but he still has a great arm. He's played in over 25 games in his career. And then on the defensive side for TCU, it's going to be about the experience of safety Derek Kendrick. With both quarterbacks playing, he's going to have to get his defense in the right position and know which personnel is on the field. First down and 10 at the 30 for Mason Rudolph, the sophomore from Rock Hill, South Carolina. And on first down, he'll throw it near side. Glidden wrapped up quickly and taken down as he's dumped by Torrance Mosley. That's a great tackle by Torrance Mosley. When you're Mason Rudolph and going against this secondary, there's definitely some inexperience back there for TCU, but they are getting better for Gary Patterson, and Rudolph is going to have to be careful with the ball and make sure he avoids turnovers. Second down and nine at the 31. Rudolph hands it off straight ahead, and he runs into a line. That's Raymond Taylor. Running the football, not a lot of room, so that will bring up third down and six. And a couple of the veterans who are back didn't start the season due to injury and suspension, but Mike Tuaua and Josh Carraway converge on the tackle. Two of the players that Patterson is really leaning on to make sure that this defense continues to grow and develop through this month of November. Third down and six after 33 for Mason Rudolph. Earlier this year versus Kansas State, set career highs across the board. 437 yards passing and five TDs. Here he is under pressure, steps up and is sacked. TCU brought pressure and they get to him. Denzel Johnson with the sack. Comes from his safety position. Here he comes from the left side of the offense. He's one on one and that block just gets beat by the inside move. That was number 47, Blake Jarwin trying to block. Denzel Johnson gets home for the sack. So Zach Siner will punt for Oklahoma State at his own 14-yard line. <laughs> Devontae Turpin, the dangerous return man back deep, and he'll get away from the football. And will be downed at the 31. So coming up, he's a swan, folks. Josh Dotson. Athletic, graceful, back on the field after this. College football presented by K Jewelers is sponsored by Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's still finger licking good. 
And by FanDuel, the leader in one week fantasy football. And welcome back to Stillwater. USAA honors all who dared to serve. Visit USAA.com slash Veterans Day. Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, Molly McGrath with you. Boom Pickens Stadium, second series now for TCU. And Trevon Boykin. You get the sense both quarterbacks, both offenses need to calm down. A lot of jitters so far in this big game. First down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Aaron Green in the backfield. Boykin pulls it out, goes over the middle, and it's caught. Kobe Lissenby, one of the fastest players in a nation. Lissenby ran a 10 100 meters. He's going to get a lot of respect deep over the top. So first down, they fling it out. Aaron Green crosses midfield, gets out of bounds as Chad Whitener comes up with the stop. You already see now Boykin settling in in this second series. A couple of easy completions, move the chains on one, now second and short. They need three yards. Boykin decides to run it, picks up the first down and more. Here's a young man that leads the nation in total offense, averaging 431 yards a game. Flag on the play. Here's this matchup that I'm going to be focusing on most of the day. Matt Pryor, the sophomore from Long Beach, right tackle going up against Emmanuel Ogba. I think they're going to get Pryor here for a hold. Holding offense number 64, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, replay second down. Here's the right tackle. There's Matt Pryor getting the start because Big V, Vitae, the left tackle is out of this game. You can see the hold, and he wasn't able to turn away right at the point of attack there as Ogba was trying to go for the ball carrier. Boykin got his shoulders turned by Matt Pryor. So that'll make it second down and eight at the 48. Boykin. Near side, picked off, intercepted, and we've got our first turnover of the game. Jordan Burton, great anticipation, and Oklahoma State is in great field position. Trevon Boykin throwing the interception and Oklahoma State has the football, and I tell you what, this man, Mike Gundy, 48 years old, is one of the best football coaches in the nation. I don't think he gets the credit or the publicity that he should. Well, for the second time since 2011, they're 8-0. It's done a remarkable job here with a fairly young Cowboy team. First down and 10 at the 46 after the turnover for Oklahoma State. Raymond Taylor in the game at running back. And they'll hand it off to Taylor trying to get outside, but he swarmed under before he gets back to the line of scrimmage as Terrell Lathan makes the tackle for the loss. Terrell Lathan, a senior, that's just great pursuit right down the line of scrimmage. As soon as he read that it was a run play, he took off. Very decisive in his move for the tackle in the backfield. Now Chris Carson comes in at running back for Oklahoma State. Second and 12 at the 48. And they'll pass it over the middle. There's a wide open receiver and incomplete. He had his man, Austin Hayes, but Mason Rudolph just threw it a little too far. I want you to watch the safety. Here's Derek Kindred, the veteran, and he bites on the route, just the inside route. There's Kindred, you see his eyes are in the backfield. He gets run right by. He's very lucky that that ball was overthrown by Mason Rudolph. That could have very easily been six points for the Cowboys. Third down and 12. Rudolph with time. Another deep ball. James Washington touchdown. Cowboys, 48 yards. There are so many great wide receivers in this conference. James Washington is one of them. Man-to-man -man coverage against James Washington is not a great idea because he's such a great athlete down the field. Great acceleration, gets some separation, and the ball was perfectly thrown for the touchdown. They've had some 
great receivers here at Oklahoma State. Hartley Dykes, Des Bryant, Justin Blackman, and now James Washington as Ben Grogan converts the extra point. Washington caught four passes for a career high 200 yards and two long TDs last week against Texas Tech. He's got it going early today against TCU. Oklahoma State leads this series that dates back to 1915. The Cowboys beat the Horn Frogs in the 1945 Cotton Bowl. Two years ago here in Stillwater, Oklahoma State won by 14. And last year, TCU beat the Cowboys resoundingly 42 to nine in Fort Worth, rebounding nicely from its 61 to 58 loss at Baylor the week before. Okay, State, three plays, 46 yards. They throw the bomb to James Washington to take a seven to nothing lead. Ben Grogan sends it away. Cavante Turpin will start inside his own five. And Turpin runs into a wall as he crosses the 15 and his surge will get him to the 20. So Trevon Boykin throws the interception. Two of six, 21 yards and an interception. And Coach Gundy said it's like facing Jordan or LeBron when you face Trevon Boykin. You know he's going to get his 30. You just don't want him to get 55. I love that. <laughs> well, they've done a nice job so far. Not the start that Trevon Boykin wanted here on the road in their first real test of the season. First down and 10 at the 20 yard line for TCU. Boykin near side. Ball caught and out of bounds goes. Jarrison Stewart, the freshman from Mesquite, Texas. I love the play call from Doug Meacham, Sonny Cumbie, the offensive coordinator. So you got a veteran, you just let him throw his way out of it. Boykin again pulls it out, throws on the move, and that one incomplete. Stewart, the intended receiver. And there's an interesting storyline. Doug Meacham, the offensive coordinator, co-offensive coordinator here at TCU. Uh, he's got Oklahoma State ties. Played here as an offensive lineman, an All-American, blocking for Thurman Thomas, as well as Barry Sanders. He was here as a coach under Mike Gundy, didn't get the offensive coordinator's job, had to go to Houston to coach before arriving at TCU. So a huge game for Doug Meacham here today. Third down and three at the 27. Boykin delivers far side. Dotson with the catch, turns it up, and Josh Dotson. Gets out of bounds at the 45. We know how good Trevon Boykin is, but this kid spectacular as well. Every time he steps on the field, they, there are 20, 25, 30 NFL scouts asking for credentials to watch him play. 71 catches, 1,200 yards. This guy has been sensational this year. At a 77 and an 84-yard touchdown against OK State last year. First and 10 at the 44. Here's a handoff. Green trying to get through the hole. And Whitener there to bring him down. This defense from Oklahoma State has played well during the course of the season. Much improved from the version that they threw on the field in 2011, when they actually were only a one-loss team with Brandon Whedon as their quarterback. This is a statistically very good defense. Last week, Glenn Spencer's unit got lit up for over 50 points at Texas Tech. He wants to prove that they can come out here and dominate a good offense today. Oklahoma State beating Texas Tech 70 to 53 in a comeback effort. Boykin steps up in the pocket with a huge lane in front of him. And Boykin slides down as he crosses midfield short of the first down. And Emmanuel had, Agba chasing him. And he had to take off in a hurry because Agba was bearing down. And only the speed and explosiveness of a guy like Trevon Boykin was going to get away. So third down and three for TCU. At the Oklahoma State 49-yard line. Trips at the bottom of your screen. Boykin to throw over the middle. Caught first down. Horn Frogs. Josh Dotson. He leads the nation in receiving yards per game at 156. Dotson's actually triple covered. They're going to run a linebacker underneath. The safety's trying to come down. Boykin still finds him for the conversion. Six straight games with at least 100 receiving yards and two touchdowns for Josh Dotson. First down and 10 at the 44.
And he'll hand it off to Green straight ahead. It crash through the hole. Green taken down by Trace Clark. Also, Jordan Stearns in on the play, the safety. His defense is without a couple of their starters from the beginning of the season. Ryan Simmons, their starting linebacker. Billy Labini, the starting defensive tackle, but they've had guys step up. Mote Maile, a junior from Euless, Texas. Jordan Burton, a junior college transfer, playing linebacker number 20. Played very well for Glenn Spencer. Second and eight at the 42. Boykin, play action, sets up deep in the pocket, throws a rocket down the field, incomplete, and a flag on the play. Listen, B, the intended receiver. And this will go against the Cowboys. Chad Whitener, number 45, is the middle linebacker. He was the one screaming down the middle of the field, clearly contacted Listen, B, before the ball arrived. Easy call for the official. Pass interference, defense number 45. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. I love what TCU is doing right now as far as the game plan goes because all of the coverage is being rolled over to Josh Dotson's side. Double and triple covered. So they've got to find another avenue to move the football. Glenn Spencer's plan right now, don't let number nine beat you. That means Colby Wissenby is going to have to have a big day. First down and 10 at the 27. Boykin looking for Dotson underneath. Incomplete and another flag. Dotson wanted it right away. You get the sense that he probably felt like he was being held. Holding. Defense number one. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's Kevin Peterson. And no question he grabbed with that left hand and pulled the right shoulder of Josh Dotson back or else Dotson's likely right now celebrating a touchdown. There was a back in the back. There was a receiver. First down and ten at the 17 for TCU. Trevon Boykin, Heisman candidate. Boykin hands it off to Green, and he'll get a couple of yards. But right now, that Oklahoma State run defense is doing a nice job against a TCU team that rushes it 226 yards per game. They're doing it without one of their starters in the front seven. Jimmy Bean, number 92, not out on the field. A defensive end, a heck of a player. So they're doing it with several different players. Trace Clark, number 90, getting in there, but the effort has been very good for Oklahoma State. Bean has a knee injury, second and eight at the 15. Boykin goes through his progressions. Underneath, throws another dart to Josh Dotson. And a first down, Horn Frogs. I love how Dotson sits down in space and gives his quarterback a target for an easy completion. Horn Frogs quickly to the line of scrimmage. Dotson three catches, 31 yards. And they'll hand it off. Cavante Turpin lining up in the backfield this time. And this kid is such a versatile freshman. He can run return punts, line up as a wide receiver, get in the backfield, do a little bit of everything. And when you see him, you're like, boy, you're not a big guy. And Gary Patterson's like, don't tell him that, because he thinks he's enormous. Plays bigger than he is, only 5'9", 152 pounds as a true freshman. But it's really changed the dynamic of TCU's offense. Gained four yards on the play, second and goal at the one. Aaron Green back in the backfield. Boykin will run the option. Boykin looking for space. Boykin second effort. Touchdown, Horn Frogs. And that's the 22nd game in a row in which TCU has scored a first quarter touchdown. It's the nation's longest streak and an ongoing Big 12 record. And the Oklahoma State the folks are going to say that loose. he fumbled, touchdown. but that ball was definitely touching the plane of the goal line with him having control at that point. It's a dead play, it's a touchdown. Remember, that's a rush, not a catch. He doesn't have to secure it through, through going down to the ground. So as soon as the ball touches the plane of the end zone, that's a touchdown, that's a dead play. He can drop the ball at that point. Touchdown, Horn Frogs. Boy, and a physical run from Trevon Boykin. You see all the flash, Gus. You see him dancing against West Virginia. But there, he lowers his shoulder, knows he has to take on the defender, and still winds up in the end zone. And that's the seventh rushing touchdown of the season for Boykin. Six twenty-eight to play in the first quarter. 
TCU going on a 10 play drive covering 80 yards, eating up four minutes and 37 seconds. Jaden Overcrow, this one won't go through. Ball picked up. So TCU misses the extra point. Jordan Stearns with the return. Seven to six, OK State. Fox College football presented by K Jewelers is sponsored by Lowe's. Hurry in this week for great winter savings. And by Dr. Pepper in college football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. Vincent Taylor blocked the extra point attempt. Jay Nobrochrome came into this game 46 of 46 on point after tries. And Taylor got his hand up. So seven to six hour score as Oklahoma State prepares to receive the football. As you take a look at the TCU drive, 10 plays, 80 yards, eating up almost five minutes, Boykin with the rushing touchdown. Great answer to that touchdown from Oklahoma State after they got the ball after the Boykin interception. Overgrown sends it away. Jeff Carr, Chris Lacey back deep. And this one juggled by Carr. Picked up with it at the 20. Carr still running. And he turns a mistake into a very nice return as Johnson makes the tackle. Let's go to Jenny Taft in the studio for Lowe's game break. Gus, thanks. Well, as you know, the first college football playoff ranking came out. Clemson is number one, and today they're hosting number 16 Florida State as Delvin Cook, who's been battling injuries in recent weeks, looks healthy here. 75 yards for the touchdown. The Seminoles score on the second play from scrimmage, up 7-0 in the first quarter. Gus, Joel, back to you. Boy, Delvin Cook is electric, one of the best in the country. And Sean McGuire getting the start, threw for 300 yards last week when Dalvin Cook was not in the game just in the first half alone. Rudolph to throw on first down over the middle, and it's caught at midfield. He throws a strike to Austin Hayes. A 13-yard gain. Rudolph quickly getting to the line of scrimmage. Play fake again. Pump fake. Down the sideline, Washington! James Washington again! 50 yards, touchdown, Cowboys! Mason Rudolph is slinging it today, Joe. He missed the first deep ball a series ago, and now he has hit two in a row. Watch the double move. He comes out like he's going to block, and then he takes off. Nick Orr, number 18, gets stuck with his eyes in the backfield. All he can do is reach out, try to grab Washington, who runs right by him. And Rudolph puts it on the money. Washington, four touchdowns in the last two quarters, dating back to last week against Texas Tech. 6.02 to play in the first. Oklahoma State making a statement. Everybody's talking about TCU and Baylor. Don't forget about us. James Washington with the 50-yard touchdown. And Oklahoma State takes a 14-6 lead, but you have to talk about Mason Rudolph. Here's a young man that had his coming out party at Baylor last year when they removed his red shirt in week 11 and he threw for 281 yards and two touchdowns against the Bears. That moment, Coach Gundy found his QB he had been looking for. Yeah, he absolutely did, and he lost that ball game, but has won 10 in a row since. He's 10-1 and one as a starting quarterback, and when he removed that red shirt, speaking of Mike Gundy, it raised a lot of eyebrows. That's late in the season to remove that red shirt, but boy, he was paid off in a serious way when they won the Bedlam game just a couple of weeks later. Rogan sends it away. Turpin will start from the one. And Turpin, burst of speed, flag on the play as he finally goes down at the 30. Flag was dropped on the near side. During the return, holding on the receiving team, number 16, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. That's Michael Downing. 
Plays safety and on special teams. So Trevon Boykin coming back on. Looks like he's got his work cut out for him today because this Oklahoma State offense is getting to the line of scrimmage quickly and they're throwing the deep ball with precision. And James Washington is saying, don't forget about me. I know Josh Dotson's playing in this game, but James Washington, boy, what a start for the Cowboy wide receiver. First down and 10 at the 18. Aaron Green in the backfield. Boykin, quarterback draw, bottled up, looking for space, and won't get it. Terrific stop by Oklahoma State. And it's Devontae Averett coming up with the tackle for a loss. Linebacker does an excellent job of coming up and not giving Boykin a lane to run through. Boykin thought he had an opening. It was closed down by the defense, and then they did a great job of pursuing the football, getting multiple guys to Boykin to bring him down. Second down and 11 after the one-yard loss at the 17. Green in motion out of the backfield, lines up in the slot. Boykin, low snap, handled over the middle, caught. First down and more. Sean Nixon still moving. Nixon. All the way down to the Oklahoma State 10 yard line. Sean Nixon, the red shirt freshman from Austin, Texas, stopped by Michael Hunter. That's a 70 yard game. Got burned by the blitz. Oklahoma State brought pressure off the right side. And all Nixon did was just replace that linebacker. So he takes off in the middle of the field, finds his way inside the 15. A gain of 70, first and 10 at the 13. Boykin with the handoff to Green. And Jordan Stearns hops on his back and brings him down. Jordan Stearns is so quick in his run reads. Here's a guy who was a team leader with 103 tackles as a sophomore a year ago. Became the first Oklahoma State underclassman in 18 years to hit the 100 tackle mark. Had a 20 tackle game against West Virginia in 2014. Second and five at the eight. Trevon Boykin so poised. Hands it off to Green. And Aaron Green picks up two yards. Darian Daniels, the freshman from Dallas with the tackle. Boy, he showed some power there too. Darian Daniels, 320 pounds and forces a third. Just outside of the five yard line. Boykin loves to run it in these situations, Gus. Third down and three at the six. Nixon in motion. Boykin. Underneath, incomplete. Intended for Dotson. But that ball broken up. Looks like Ashton Lampkin got a hand on it. I thought the ball was actually just a hair late from Boykin, and it allowed Ashton Lampkin, as the ball is there right there, oh, and he gets away with a hole right in front of the official, tugs the jersey back, and he uses that momentum. Boykin saw it, wanted the flag right away, and he used that momentum to get back in the play and bat it away. That's a big no call. So Jaden Oberchrome comes in to attempt a 23-yard field goal. Got it up and good. TCU settles for three. Coming up, James Washington. What a season he's been having. Two touchdowns already. He'll be back on the field after this. The Stillwater Medical Center has created the Stillwater Strong Foundation after the tragic events at the Oklahoma State Homecoming Parade two weeks ago. The foundation will provide assistance to victims and their families to help cover medical expenses. Visit smc-foundation.org to learn more. So Oberkrone ready to send it away. This one kicked in the corner and will not be returned. So all our crews wearing the wristbands to honor the victims of that tragic homecoming accident. 
Bobby Wilson, our cameraman. Wyatt Anderson, big fella. Andy Nelson, Superman for us. All of us. First down and 10 after 25. And they'll hand it off, stand on the ground, Raymond Taylor. Not a lot of room, he picks up a couple. We're going to have to see an adjustment from TCU. They're going to have to play safety help over the top of James Washington. Should open up the run game for Oklahoma State. Rudolph, near side. And it's Washington again who gets thumped going out of bounds by Isaaku. And a flag on the play. Yeah, mistake. Isaaku came in and was a step too late. That hit took place out of bounds. We'll tack on 15 more. After the play was over, personal foul, number 21 of the defense, late hit out of bounds. That penalty will be added to the end of the run, first down. It's actually number 31, Ridwan Isaaku. That right foot was down, out of bounds, clearly heading that direction, the officials were all over it. First down and 10 at the 49 for Mason Rudolph, who's been brilliant in this first quarter. Five of six, 120 yards and two touchdowns. Ball start, offense number 73, five yard penalty, first down. That's Victor Saleko. Transferred to Oklahoma State after Alabama Birmingham disbanded its program in 2014. Two year starter down there, left tackle for the Blazers in 13 and 14. Started every game so far in this season. So first down and 15 at the 46. Rudolph steps up in the pocket, wants to run it, gets outside. And Rudolph close to a first down, another flag thrown. Raven Howard chasing him out of bounds. He's thrown in the general direction of David Glidden, number 13. Great slot receiver. Senior from Mustang, Oklahoma. Holding defense number 30. That 10 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. That's Denzel Johnson. Got the sense that because it was a run for the quarterback that it was going to be a hold on Glidden, but as shown right there, very clearly Denzel Johnson tackles Glidden to the ground, didn't have his eyes in the backfield, didn't realize that Mason Rudolph had taken off out of the pocket. First and, tw and 10 at the 30. Now Rudolph sets up the play and incomplete. Chris Carson, the intended receiver, he hadn't turned around. Looks like they were trying to set up a screen. Davian Pearson just read that beautifully, number 57. He's the tackle right in the middle of your screen. And as soon as he realizes that he's being blocked and right in the face of the running back, he just takes off with him right down the line of scrimmage and is right there. Oklahoma State actually lucky that ball wasn't caught. It would have gone for a loss. Second and 10. Rudolph near side, Washington in space, and great coverage by TCU as James Washington had nowhere to go towards Mosley, first man to him. And when you go to a TCU practice, Gary Patterson is always yelling at his secondary, tackle the legs. Anytime they're in space outside of the hash marks, he wants his guys going low, wrapping up the legs to prevent yards after the catch. Mosley did a terrific job there. That was excellent. So a third down and six for Oklahoma State at the TCU 26 yard line. Washington the receiver at the bottom of your screen. He's got two touchdowns. Glidden in the slot up top. He looks that way. Rudolph in trouble. Flag on the play. Rudolph throws it complete. And it looks like this will go against the Cowboys. Davian Pearson getting into the backfield for TCU. Holding offense number 57, 10 yards from the previous spot, replay third down. 
Pearson's coming from his tackle spot, and number 57, Paul Lewis, the junior from Houston, he just turns him, has his hand outside the shoulder, drags him down right in front of the official. The flags came out. Pearson doing an excellent job on this series. He's being disruptive. That's what you want from your defensive tackles is that they're disrupting the timing of the offense. Pearson's done that on this series. Third down and 16 at the 36. Rudolph steps up, delivers, incomplete. Chris Carson had a step on Ty Summers, but Rudolph couldn't find him. TCU dodged a bullet there because Ty Summers was behind by about two steps. Patterson knows it. And these defenses have done a pretty good job so far. I know Oklahoma State has scored 14 already, but a couple of stops now for each defense against these high-powered Big 12 offenses. So Sider will punt it away at his own 49, Turpin back deep. End over end kick. And it's down inside the five. Nicely done on special teams by Zach Siner. Well, the UFC returns to FS1 with a full card of action, headlined by what should be a wild rematch between middleweight contenders Vitor Belfort and Dan Henderson. After splitting their first two bouts against each other, it all comes down to this. UFC Fight Night begins tonight at 7 Eastern on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, last series, TCU, they started finding a rhythm down the field with Colby Lissenby, and then on the short and intermediate routes with Josh Dotson hooking up in the pass game. We'll see there, where they go here on this series. From the four. Boykin sets up in the end zone, throws the long ball down the sideline. Dotson and incomplete he caught it out of bounds there's not a better jump ball player in America than Josh Dotson he just so happened to get hit and he comes down out of bounds the problem with that route wasn't the execution there at the top but was the fact that Dotson was running right next to the sideline. If you're a wide receiver running deep down the field right next to the sideline, the quarterback has no margin for error of where to throw that ball. Second down and 10 at the four. Boykin, far side, caught Dotson. And he's wrestled down by Peterson. Peterson, tough task at hand for this senior. And Glenn Spencer compared him to Justin Gilbert, the eighth overall pick from a couple of years ago, played here at Oklahoma State as a corner. He said Gilbert was just bigger, had more of the measurables, but Kevin Peterson has all the skill level that Gilbert did. 5'11", 190, he's showing it here today. Oklahoma State defense with a chance to get off the field right here. Third and four for TCU at their own 10. Boykin handing it off. And they won't get it. Fumble on the play. Oklahoma State has the ball. Second turnover of the game for TCU. He ran in to the back of his own lineman. Here's Green going down and their knee is touching the turf. That ball looks like it's still secure, and then it comes loose. They should absolutely review it. It was close enough to review, and they should take a further look. The ruling of the field of a fumble is under further review. Aaron Green trying to get to that right side, and he ran into the back of Joseph Noteboom, number 68. And as he was going down to the ground, looked like that ball was still secure in his right hand. Mike Pereira, as always, our rules official, our rules expert with us from Los Angeles. Mike, what'd you see? Yeah, I think you always look, Joel, to see what's down first, and it is the knee, and then the hand on the ball. Is the ball moving in the hand when that knee is down? And and to me, he's got clear possession. So you watch, the first thing you're going to see is the knee going to the ground. And watch the hand there, clearly on the ball, not moving. 
I think this is the type of thing that they're looking for in replay. It's beyond a shadow of a doubt, in my opinion, that he's down before the ball comes loose. So I think the ball should, at that point, go back. That would be a big break for TCU. They would still have to punt the football away. Because it, it will either be first and ten, Oklahoma State, or fourth and three. Right. For the Horn Frogs. The last thing that Gary Patterson wants is to try to defend a short field. He'd much rather send his punting unit on, obviously. And, and here comes the call. After further review, the runner's knee was down prior to the fumble. It'll be fourth down and three for TCU at the 11 yard line. So TCU catches a break. And they will get a chance to punt it away. Boy, this defense for Oklahoma State, they've been impressive. Statistically, the second best scoring defense in the conference behind Oklahoma. They came in with a chip on their shoulder after last week giving up over 50 points to Texas Tech, and they have played hard. Good discipline, great pursuit. They've tackled well. Could not have gone better so far in the first quarter for Glenn Spencer's Oklahoma State defense. Ethan Perry will punt it out of his own end zone. It looks like he'll wait till the quarter ends. End of the first quarter in Stillwater. Oklahoma State 14, TCU 9. 9, Oklahoma State with the lead and the ball as we start the second quarter. Let's check out the KFC stat comparison. Well, you see the Oklahoma State defense has done a nice job in terms of yards per play. Remember in the Big 12, total yards, total scoring, you have to throw that out the window. It's about yards per play, points per possession, the new metrics in college football. The biggest difference so far is that one turnover, the Boykin interception. So Ethan Perry will punt it three yards deep in his own end zone. McCleskey Glidden back, and it will be fair caught by McCleskey. He bobbled the ball. Who's got it? He muffed the punt. The second time that he tried to go up and catch it as if he was a receiver with his hands rather than cradling it in like you normally see from a punt returner. It looks like Oklahoma State will retain possession. And this is where an intricacy of this stadium comes into play. This stadium runs east and west, not north and south. And so this one is the only one in the Big 12, at least when I was playing, that one direction you're looking into the sun mm. rather than north and south when you never have to look at the sun because it's just passing over the stadium right parallel with a 50-yard line. The sun is in that direction, just off to the left corner of the stadium. I wonder if that had any factor in it. They were on the left hash as the defense was looking at it. It's one of those interesting things here with this team. First down to 10, J.W. Walsh in the game now. Quarterback, his first throw is a good one as Walsh completes the pass for a 25-yard gain as Zach Veach makes the reception. Not just running when Walsh comes in. They run their whole offense with him. Takes over mostly in the red zone. First down and 10 at the 36. And Walsh handing the ball off to Carson. Carson lowers his shoulder. He'll hop forward. Looks like he picked up a first down. Michael Downing with the tackle. First down, Oklahoma State. Why do you bring Walsh in the game right now? Mason Rudolph playing some good football. He was, but they got stopped on the last series. You can use this quarterback change as, as a, a means to create momentum when you didn't have it on the previous series. And you can see a lot of energy on the field right now. First down and 10 to the 25. Walsh steps back with time, flings it out to the far side, incomplete. So J.W. Walsh, senior from Denton, Texas, last week versus Texas Tech, with the Cowboys trailing by 10 at half, Gundy made the switch to Walsh, and he responded by going four for five, 167 yards and two touchdowns, rushed it eight times for 80 yards, including a career-long 64-yard touchdown. And this is why it's so unique, Gus. It's like a personnel group. So within the same series, they'll switch it. It's not that this is Walsh's series or Rudolph's series. Rudolph now on the field behind the chains. Second and 10 of the 25. Rudolph pumping. 
Wins it out to the far side. Taylor with running room. First down, Cowboys. Right now, the Oklahoma State offense has all the answers. Yeah, TCU got stuck in a blitz. They were trying to bring pressure on Mason Rudolph, which worked earlier in the game for a sack. That same blitz, Gary Patterson goes back to, though. Rudolph recognizes it, and he's able to get the ball out to the outlet, the wide receiver, excuse me, running back, on the swing route to the outside. First down and 10 at the TCU 12 for Oklahoma State. And then finally Taylor, no, Jeff Carr. Jeff Carr. Touchdown, Cowboys. This time they give Rudolph the run pass option. He reads the zone read, doesn't like it. Flips it out to Jeff Carr, and the true freshman from Temple, Texas, takes it right over the pylon for the touchdown. 20 to 9. Oklahoma State, as Ben Grogan comes in to attempt the extra point. What a start for Oklahoma State. Gary Patterson's team has got to try to change the momentum of this game because the Cowboys have, right now, They've been better for Mike Gundy. More energy, better pursuit to the football, making plays. And they've taken it to the number eight team in the country so far. Was his knee down is the big question before he crossed the goal line. After review, it is a touchdown. So the touchdown stands as Grogan Comes in for the extra point. And it's good. Oklahoma State, I tell you what, they're scoring quickly. Their first touchdown, 46 seconds. Their second touchdown, 17 seconds. Their third touchdown, a minute and 13. Gary Patterson's got trouble. Heisman Trophy, always won in November. Three to one, my guys, Corey Coleman, Travon Boykin. Going to have to make a statement here today down on the road, and Leonard Fournette will have his chance tonight against one of the best rush defense in the country as we take a look at the Nissan Heisman watch. Ezekiel Elliott going to have a new starting quarterback, or at least an old starting quarterback, if you want to put it that way. And Christian McCaffrey has been excellent during the course of the season. Stanford getting a win at Colorado earlier today. Turpin back deep. And he'll take a knee. So if the season ended today and you voted for the Heisman Trophy, who'd get it? If the season ended today, before the start of this game, I would vo vote for Trevon Boykin because he's a quarterback. He affects the game more than any player in America. As far as total yards go, he's got more total yards, more touchdowns per game through eight games. And the last four Heisman Trophy winners. Now, Leonard Fournette's going to have a lot to say about that. He's having one of the best seasons I can remember. And obviously, with the perception of the conference that he plays in, he's going to have to lead nationally. But my guy would be Boykin right now. First down and 10 at the 25. And Boykin will hand it off to Johnson. Trying to get around the corner, but he does not. Trey Flowers coming up, Richard sophomore from Converse, Texas, and making a hard hit. What we're seeing is both safeties for Oklahoma State. Jordan Stearns, number 13, Trey Flowers, number 31. They're filling hard on the run. That means the deep game has got to be open soon. Second down to nine, and they'll flip it out to the far side. Nixon gets his shoulder square, picks up a first down, and hops out of bounds. Desmond White just gets an unbelievable block right here. He's able to get the player on the ground. That's number 20. Jordan Burton, the outside linebacker for Oklahoma State. He springs that play for Sean Nixon down the sidelines in order to get a first down. A 16-yard gain, first and 10. TCU at their own 42. Boykin handing it off around the corner. Turpin. And Turpin. Picks about, picks up about 
three yards on the play as Ashton Lampkin and Chad Whitener combined on the tackle. And there's Trey Flowers again, number 31. He was the first one there. Didn't make the tackle. Force him to change back. Turpin in the backfield this time. Nice cut. Turpin still running. And Cavante Turpin with a 17-yard pickup. Suffered a concussion against Iowa State. Didn't re return to that game, but was back in the lineup last week against West Virginia, and now giving his team a spark when they desperately need it down 21 to 9. He set the Big 12 freshman record for receiving yards, receiving touchdowns rather, in a game with four against Texas earlier this year. First and 10 at the 38. Boykin with time, fires, and incomplete. Devontae Turpin, the intended receiver, that ball sailing high. And he had his offensive lineman, Joseph Noteboom, number 68, right back in his lap, Boykin did. And that's why he was unable to follow through. If you can't follow through as a quarterback, the ball's always going to sail high on you. That's what it does there for the incompletion. Halapuli Vati Vaitai in the game, came in with that injured knee, but giving it a go at left tackle. Second and 10 at the 38. Boykin pulls it out, looks for Dotson incomplete. Dotson slipped as he made his cut in front of Kevin Peterson. He slipped in. There was a lot of contact going on. Officials letting him play here. That's to the advantage of Kevin Peterson, senior from Oklahoma. Definitely slipped. Not as much contact as I thought watching it live. Third down and 10 at the 38. Horn Frogs need to go to the Oklahoma State 28 for first down. Boykin steps up, flips it up, caught, Hicks, and he will not get the first down, Kyle Hicks. Lampkin makes the tackle, but you get the feeling that TCU may go for it. My goodness, he took just an enormous hit, but TCU will go with a tremendous tempo here. Fourth down and one, Boykin quarterback draw. Quarterback sneak, rather. Timeout, Oklahoma State prior to the snap. That's their first timeout of the half. Fox College Football presented by K Jewelers is sponsored by Nissan. Go to NissanHeismanHouse.com to cast your official vote for the next Heisman. So a fourth down situation coming up for TCU as the Horn Frogs trail. Oklahoma State here in Stillwater. Trevon Boykin back on the field. Fourth down and one. Hicks, the pistol back behind Boykin. Boykin runs it himself. Picks up the first down and more as he's finally chopped down at the 20. That dude is so calm. I mean, big situations, fourth down, reads it beautifully, finds the seam. Now, that's one of the great weapons that TCU has is the fact that their quarterback is not going to panic. On the road, 21 to 9, still the second quarter. He knows there's a lot of time left. This guy just came, stays even keeled and calm at all times. First down and 10 of the 21. Watch Josh Dotson. He's in the slot at the top of your screen. Boykin looking that way. Boykin reverses field. Boykin taken down at the 32. Jarrell Owens, the redshirt freshman. And this is just all effort. Great coverage down the field. And Owens just never quit. Working against Vitae, Big V, number 74, with that knee injury, overpowered him, was able to get to the quarterback, and now Vitae moves over to the right tackle spot. A sack for Oklahoma State. They're second in the nation behind Penn State in sacks per game. Nearly four court contests. Second and 21. Boykin checks it down. Has Turpin. And Turpin dive forward and get close to the 25-yard line as Mike Tavius Jones makes the tackle. And Boykin's having to hold the ball because these corners for Oklahoma State as a group are the best in the conference. 
and they're not allowing Listenby and Dotson to get open down the field. Boykin having to hold the ball. Glenn Spencer's plan working to a T right now. Third down at 15 at the 26. Here's Boykin to throw it. Fine time. Boykin in trouble. Boykin gets outside. Now comes back across the field. Wants to run and look at this kick. Trevon Boykin down inside the 15. Not a first down. He picked up 12. And that'll bring up fourth down and about three. I just I can't get over. I can't get over how good of a player Trevon Boykin is. Gary Patterson went for it already once on this series on fourth down. He's going to do it again, but not before he gets a timeout to talk it over. 21 to 9. Oklahoma State, 9 01 to play in the second. Fourth down coming up. For one, Clemson is struggling with their ACC rivals, Florida State. Notre Dame shows why they're the number five team in the country, and we'll check in on an undefeated Iowa side on the road at Indiana. Gus Joel, we'll see you at the break. Iowa with a terrific quarterback in Bethard. I hear he has a groin injury, so limited in mobility. Fourth down and three at the 14. Empty backfield for Trevon Boykin. He wants to throw it. Lobs it in the end zone. Incomplete. This would be the intended receiver, so TCU Turns it over on downs. The Oklahoma State defense hold it. Glenn Spencer pleased. I love what Spencer did there. He brought the all-out blitz, but then all the secondary players played inside leverage, meaning they tried to play in between Trevon Boykin and their wide receiver. Normally, the quarterback wants to throw it quick over the middle of the field when the defense brings everybody like that, like Glenn Spencer did on the last play, but he was stuck having to throw Kind of a prayer to the back of the end zone to listen be not even to his guy Dotson who's a great air player jump ball player so that's a win for Oklahoma State what a huge series for their defense so TCU goes 11 plays covering 69 yards they end up with no points Oklahoma State will start at their own 14 delayed handoff Taylor gets outside jitterbugging and finally wrapped up as Raymond Taylor stopped by Derek Kindred, Javon Boykin on the phone. What's he talking about, Joel? Well, they're trying to find what is going to work at this point. They're saying, what adjustments do we need to make? What type of routes do we need to move to? And at this point, the man coverage on the outside, the corners are just winning over Josh Dotson and Colby Listenby. So they're going to have to try to get the run game going in order to loosen up that secondary coverage. Second down and six of the 18. Rudolph up the sideline and almost intercepted Torrance Mosley it would have been a tough catch but he got hands on the football Washington the intended receiver got to give a lot of credit to Mosley because he realizes that he was beat once already be before by Washington in a straight go route down the sideline and so he turned and ran right away and was able to go up Washington had to act as a defensive back there to bat that ball away or else it would have been TCU with the football. Horn Frog defense with a chance to break Oklahoma State's serve right here. Third and six at the 18. Rudolph to throw it. Lobs it wide open. Aitman. Marcel Aitman. Touchdown Oklahoma State. Derek Kindred, number 26, the safety. Eyes all over the outside player. He's going outside and just completely misses the deep route. He's the most experienced defender they have. At times, he's been the only returning starter on the field from that defense that was able to beat Ole Miss a year ago in the Peach Bowl. And he's been beaten twice already today. Oklahoma State pouring it on. Extra point good. We've been talking about Trevon Boykin, but how about this kid? Mason Rudolph, 9 of 13, 
231 yards passing, four touchdowns already. And folks, we're still in the first half. Fox College Football presented by Kay Jewelers is sponsored by FanDuel, the leader in one-week fantasy football. And by Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's still finger licking good. An offensive explosion for Oklahoma State here in the first half, 28-9 over TCU. And how about their touchdown passes? 48 yards, 50 yards, 12 yards, and now 82. This team is good. They've largely flown under the radar in Big 12 play, but Mason Rudolph, have yourself a half, son. Woo! We all die for that, these quarterbacks. We die for a start like this in a big game. Man, he's got to be feeling good. Turpin back deep. And it's take a knee. Let's go to Jenny Taft in Los Angeles for a game break. Gus, thanks. How about number nine, Iowa visiting Indiana? Jordan Howard takes it 29 yards to the house. Back-to-back -to -back touchdowns for Howard as he helps the Hoosiers take the lead 17-14 over the undefeated Hawkeyes in the second quarter. Gus, Joel, I'll keep you posted. Tell you what, Joel, I like Indiana and what they're doing this season. They gave Ohio State a run for their yep. money at home. They did, and offensively, they're one of the more dynamic teams in that Big Ten Conference, and they're going to score some points, so the onus is going to be on the Iowa Hawkeyes to try to match them. They are uh, in for it there in that ball game. TCU now trying to match Oklahoma State. Here's Boykin. He'll flip it out to Turpin. Turpin with a lane. Turpin gets to the 40. Turpin still running and gets out of bounds at the 48, a 23-yard gain. Now, remember, TCU trailed by 18 at halftime and came back to beat Kansas State. Different caliber team, though. That's right, and they got a defensive score on the first possession of the second half when Derek Kindred took an interception back for a touchdown. This is a different mix right now and a different feeling with the momentum on Oklahoma State side. Dotson in motion. Boykin looking. Boykin delivers. Far side incomplete. Dotson the intended receiver. That's off of his hands. You can only defend TCU like this if your secondary is playing excellent football, and that's exactly what's going on for Oklahoma State right now. The corners are playing well, and they've got four of them. Kevin Peterson, we've talked about number one. Ashton Lampkin, number six. 17, Michael Hunter. Raymond Richards, number 18. All of them work in there, so they're fresh. They've got a great rotation of players. Second and 10 of the 48. Boykin. Over the middle. Caught first down. And this is Sean Nixon. The problem is Nixon reestablished himself as a runner after the catch and actually gave up a couple yards, so it won't be a first down. Well, four down territory now for TCU. As Boykin runs the ball, flat throw. And Boykin's helmet comes off. Tried to run an unusual formation there with the offensive tackles going out wide. I'm not sure everyone was set when they snapped the football. Boykin lost his helmet, so depending on this call, he may have to leave for a play, but if it's fourth down, they may be punting anyways. If this is on TCU. Now, if it is some sort of alignment issue. Oklahoma State would likely decline, making it fourth down. Illegal formation on the offense. Too many men in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Number two for TCU's helmet came off. TCU has chosen to call a timeout to keep him in the game. 7 2 to go. Second quarter, 28-9. 7 2 to go in the second quarter. Trevon Boykin remaining on the sideline, so it looks like Gary Patterson will punt the football away. Trailing 28-9 on fourth down. As Ethan Perry trots out. 
I think that's a smart decision. The last thing he wants to do is create momentum for Oklahoma State and give them a short field all at the same time. But the bigger point, the Oklahoma State defense turns them away again. They've been, they've been great today. I mean, sensational play. Jalen McCleskey back deep. And he has it at the 10. Every game is important for 12th ranked Utah. As they try to get themselves into the playoff conversation tonight, they take on Washington, and it's a must-win game for the Utes. Coverage begins after our game right here on Fox, and Huskies getting a little bit better. They are, in particular on the defensive side. That one could be one of those low-scoring affairs. If you like defense, pitching duels, <laughs> you're, That's right. you're likely to enjoy tonight's ball game. Obviously, Utah still in the mix, controlled their own destiny in the Pac-12 South. And as we've seen, Gus, if their quarterback, Travis Wilson, plays well and efficient, they're tough to beat. Of course, through those three interceptions at USC and their lone loss of the season. So Mason Rudolph comes back on the field. First down and 10 at the 10-yard line for this sophomore from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Rudolph to throw it on first down, guns it over the middle and caught. Jalen McCleskey, a 18-yard game. And this offense is just humming now. I mean, fast tempo. Rudolph again. Another completion. I just You can hear the velocity of that football all the way up here. This time, it's Blake Jarwin. An 18-yard gain, so back-to-back 18-yard -back gains. They'll run a child, Rennie Childs, and he'll get down to the 45. I've never seen an offense move this quickly, Gus. Seven-yard pickup, second and three. Out to the far side, McCleskey again. First down, Cowboys. Barry Patterson is a guy that relies on adjustments. He calls the defense. Everyone's looking over the sidelines, but they can't right now because of the speed and tempo of Oklahoma State. Now with the substitution, the officials should allow TCU to match up, so it'll slow down for a second as Rudolph actually comes out of the game and J.W. Walsh enters at quarterback. First and 10 at the 42. Raymond Taylor, Jeff Carr in the backfield with JW. And a timeout called by OK State. That's their second timeout call, 28 to 9. Second quarter, 5.42 to go, 28 to 9. I was just going to say, that's a point where I, I felt like the coaching change, trying to mix in the quarterbacks, actually hurt them. They were operating with such great efficiency with Mason Rudolph. They tried to run Walsh out there, then have to take a timeout because they were close to taking a delay a game. From the 42. And they'll hand it off Taylor straight away. I love this Raymond Taylor. Taylor, a transfer from Kansas State. He was just a student at Kansas State. Comes here to Oklahoma State. This guy's like a bumper car at Disneyland. Guys just bounce off him. Had a touchdown run a week ago. He's only 5'8", 195 pounds, but runs low to the ground. Great effort. Second and seven. McCleskey in motion. Walsh pits it to McCleskey, he wants to throw it, does it, and is chopped down. Great job by the TCU defense as Joseph Broadnax and Ty Summers read the play. Now the coaching staff stopped the momentum for Oklahoma State when they ran a new personnel group on. That tempo was so good, the efficiency was so good, and then all of a sudden it's frozen, and Mason Rudolph has to come back on the field now in a third and long situation. Third down and 11. Rudolph steps into his throw. Incomplete. No flag intended for Marcel Aitman.
Well defended, Nick Orr. The sophomore from DeSoto, Texas, Nick Orr. Little contact with the left arm, but he's able to get up there and then play the ball just perfectly. That is excellent coverage. I know there was some hand fighting go going on, but they've been allowing contact down the field all day long, and Nick Orr takes advantage to bat it away. Zach Siner will punt it away from the 43. End over end kick. Kirkman lets it go over his head, and it dies. What a job by Zach Siner. Second time he's done it. 4-13 to go, second quarter. Let's take a look at how we got here, folks. Boy, it started quickly with Rudolph throwing some beautiful down the field passes to James Washington. Boykin, the uncharacteristic mistake. They finally got in the end zone, had the PAT blocked, and then it continued with Mason Rudolph. Again, blown coverage is down the field for TCU. Aitman ends up in the end zone. And here we are at 28 to 9, and things could not have been going any better for that young man, Mason Rudolph who's been terrific here today in the first half. So Siders punts. That forced TCU to start at the four and now the one. First and ten at the one yard line. Green running. And they give him a little bit of room. The idea here, the goal of the offense in this situation, backed up, shadow of their own goal line, is to get two first downs. It's called backed up offense. One of the great weapons the quarterback can use is a hard cadence. Try to get a free five yards by drawing the defensive line offside. Second down and eight at the three. Boykin throws off his back foot. And it's a catch. Nicely done by Josh Dotson. I thought he was throwing it away. Dotson wasn't, he was running a go route. Boykin had a player right in his face. Number 10, Seth Jacobs, just threw it out of bounds. Dotson comes back to catch it. First down, Boykin now runs it himself. Breaking free, picks up another first down, and finally taken down at the 45-yard line by Jordan Stearns, but it's a 17-yard gain. So there's your two first downs. Now you're in normal offense. Under 3.30 left in this first half, need a score. TCU with one timeout, and Aaron Green running. We'll get to the 40-yard line. Vincent Taylor defensively. TCU quickly to the line of scrimmage, second and seven. There's another handoff, and Green stopped by Vincent Taylor again. Nowhere to go against this rush defense, the best rush defense in the Big 12, only giving up. 138 yards per game, and now another one of these huge third down opportunities for the defense to get off the field once again. They've been excellent, and it's all started with their coverage. Their corners have locked up these great wide receivers all day long. They'll have to do so again here. TCU, two of eight on third down conversions, third and five at the 40. Boykin. Looking, looking, checks it down, Hicks. And Hicks gets to midfield and even more. First down, Horn Frogs at the Oklahoma State 45. That's experience. He didn't force the ball down for the first down. He checks it down, allows his back to run for it. Boykin now throwing on first down. In trouble, scrambling, on the move. Woo! Incomplete. Desmond White had hit him in the worst place possible. Right in the hands. White's going to want that one back. His quarterback, Dipsy Do, out of the pocket, by some time. They have another first down right in the hands of the sophomore from DeSoto. High school quarterback from DeSoto, really a high school legend. At 5'7", 150 pounds, just an excellent player, but drops the last opportunity. 2-0-1 to play in the first half. Second and 10 at the 46 for TCU. Boykin over the middle. Caught by Dotson, breaks the tackle and goes down. And Josh Dotson gets up grabbing his wrist. Uh-oh. He's He suffered some injuries in the offseason. 
Had an ankle injury, a hand injury. Didn't allow him to play in spring ball or fall camp. As he goes down, you see that left hand was down <laughs> on the ground when Jordan Burton came in from the inside. Six catches, 64 yards for Dotson in the first half. Boy, that is the last person you want to see on the ground if you're a TCU fan other than Trevon Boykin. Last year, he broke all of the TCU records receiving-wise, and then he's already smashed those same records that he set so far in this season through only eight games. This kid has done so much. Losing him would be a serious blow as you take a look at the numbers. He's a game-changing type player. He affects everything that goes on on the football field. Because Glenn Spencer, the defensive coordinator, has to call defenses that account for Josh Dotson with two and sometimes three players. Now, he can commit more resources to stopping number two, Trevon Boykin, in both the run game and spying him when he scrambles when he's trying to throw the football. First down and 10 at the 34. Somebody has to step up with Dotson on the sideline. Boykin fires it. This one caught by Green. And Green tripped up at the 30-yard line. Well, you see the true measure of a leader and a quarterback in these situations. You start lo losing players around you. You're on the road against the number 14 team in the country. It's 28-9. Trevon Boykin has got to be great from now on. Second down and seven at the 31. Boykin over the middle. And it's a play and intercepted. Flag on the play and Trace Clark almost had the intercepted at interception. Well, it was great effort from Clark, who's a defensive end, also outside linebacker for Glenn Spencer's defense. Oh, a large discussion going on. There wasn't contact between Trace and the receiver, Turpin. I'm wondering if they're discussing, Gus, the contact that was made after the ball was tipped when Turpin was in a defenseless position. Turpin in a defenseless position. There's the hit. It may be targeting. It may be the discussion. Personal foul targeting number 13 of the defense. That play was under further review. Jordan Stearns, number 13. Mike Pereira joins us from Los Angeles. Mike, your thoughts on this play? Well, you know, this is our great targeting rule that we have here in college football. You know, was the intent to uh, go helmet to helmet? Um, you know, it looks like the face is up, but again, any contact of the head or neck area. But to me, this is, this is not the flagrant play that you're trying to take out of the game. You know, it's almost face mask on the helmet to me. And, and I would love the philosophy to be, if it's at all close, then take off the targeting, but uh, we'll see what they look at in replay if they consider that there is contact of the head or neck area of a defenseless player, which the receiver is. That's what's so difficult, Mike, is that in, in the language, by the letter of the law, yes, there's contact, helmet to helmet, head or neck area to a defenseless player, but in the gray area, in the intent of the safety is what you're talking about, and that's where you would hope that I mean, the, the play out here, Joel, is that it, that it has to be forcible. I mean, they did put that rule in that it has to be forcible contact to the head or neck area. I agree with you. I this 
rule in particular, I'm all for protecting players, but attaching the ejection is just such a severe penalty. We'll see what happens here. After further review, the foul is not targeting. They have an incomplete pass that will be third down. Yeah, I, I agree with that reversal. Well done. With the intent not there, that's an excellent job by the officials. Great job by Mike Pereira explaining a difficult situation. And so that makes it third down at seven at the 31 for TCU. Jordan Stearns remains on the field. Boy, get out of the shotgun. Aaron Green standing next to him. Josh Dotson on the sideline with an apparent wrist injury. Boykin, here comes a blitz. Boykin delivers. Ball deflected at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. There's Emmanuel Ogba showing up the defensive end. Watch him hit the right arm of Trevon Boykin. Couldn't get anything on the ball. That guy affects more passing plays than anybody in the country. 14 quarterback hurries so far this season. 13 and a half tackles for loss. Nine sacks has earned the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week honors three times in eight games already. And he forces TCU to a kicking situation. So Jaden Oberchrome comes in. He kicked a career long and school record tying 57 yard field goal against West Virginia as part of a four for four performance. Timeout. Oklahoma State. That's our third and final timeout of the half. And while we have a timeout on the field, let's go to Los Angeles and check in with Jenny Taft. Gus, thanks. I've got more from Iowa and Indiana closing seconds of the second quarter. Iowa quarterback C.J. Beathard keeps it as he vaults into the end zone. The play was reviewed, but the touchdown stands. The undefeated Hawkeyes back on top, 21-17 at the half. Gus? All right, Jenny, thank you very much. You have to really tip your hat to Kirk Ferentz and what he's been able to establish. They went through some rough times, but the university stuck with them, and now Iowa playing some good football. They really are, and, and this really their most severe test before a potential matchup with the East champion in the Big Ten championship game. 49-yard field goal attempt for Jaden Obercrow. it away and no good Oklahoma State doing it all in the first half especially on defense they are shutting down this high-powered TCU O. good snap good hold over Chrome who's been one of the best kickers in this conference for a long time over 70 field goals made and the disappointment for TCU. Boy, there's just a lack of energy right now for the TCU side because this Oklahoma State team has come out there and hit them in the mouth. This defense has been awfully impressive, holding TCU to nine. They've been physical with the wide receivers. They've stopped the running game, and they've bottled up Trevon Boykin for the most part. And Oklahoma State will have the football to start the second half. Rudolph out of the shotgun. Cowboys out of timeouts. And he'll throw it anyway. Steps up and goes down. Terrell Lathan with the tackle, 40 seconds and counting. Fewest points and a half this season for TCU. I think Oklahoma State after that first play is going to be. Yards are pretty even, Joel. Yeah, and they're going to be content to just go in with 28 to 9. Yards are pretty even. 334 for Oklahoma State, 324 for TCU, but the game is not. Oklahoma State with big plays in the first half, 28 to 9. They'll get it to start the second. Right now, let's send you to Rob Stone in the studio. Welcome back, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Fox College football presented by K Jewelers. 
And here at halftime, it's 28 to 9, Oklahoma State leading eighth ranked TCU. Welcome back, everybody. Gus Johnson along with Joel Clad. And we talked about Mike Gundy and how he is one of the best coaches in America. And when you talk about preparation, he had his guys ready to play on both sides of the football. He really did, and I love the offensive game plan early because they allowed their quarterback, Mason Rudolph, to take shots down the field with their great wide receiver, James Washington, and that's how it started off. They were winning on the outside. 12 of 17 for 272 so far. Four touchdown passes for Mason Rudolph, and James Washington was the target of a couple of them. Aikman gets in the end zone on a blown coverage from TCU, and after that momentum started with their offense, then it was all about the defense. The defense gets it's a pick, a rare pick from Trevon Boykin, and they harassed him all half long. They did not allow open receivers down the field. The coverage was sensational the entire half. You've got to give a lot of credit to these corners because they're a, a large reason why they're in the lead right now. And that front seven only holding TCU to 83 rushing yards so far. Oklahoma State will get the football to start the second half. Leading this football game. As you take a look, the score last year was inverted. TCU at home up 28 to 9. Overthrown sends it away. And this one will be returned. Jeff Carr from the one. Carr gets to the 20 before being stopped. Let's go downstairs to Molly McGrath. Gus, Gary Patterson very upset at the half. He told me his star receiver, Josh Dotson, is doubtful to return. Dotson had an x-ray done on his left wrist, and uh, Patterson said that it's obviously going to change a lot for their game plan if he's not in. And with Dotson doubtful, Mike Gundy said the way they defend the middle will change, and he'll shift his focus to containing Cavante Turpin and stopping the run, guys. All right, thank you very much. So Mason Rudolph back on the field. In the first half, 12 of 17, 272 yards, four touchdowns. He threw an 82-yard touchdown. Almost kept a clean sheet, only one sack. First and 10 at the 21. And they'll hand it off on first down to Ray Taylor. And Taylor wrestled down as he crosses the 25. You know, one of the only times this Oklahoma State team was stopped in the first half is because I felt like the coaching staff got bored. You know, they wanted to switch the personnel and do something new. Allow Mason Rudolph here to take control of this game because this is the package with Rudolph in throwing the ball down the field that has been so successful. I expect them to stick with that here in the second half. Second down and three at the 28-yard line. Taylor the pistol back. Rudolph fires to the far side. McCleskey, nice stop and start first down. He lost it, but he was down on the play. Tackling in space. Such a premium in this conference with everybody spread out. All these spread offenses with high tempo. It forces very vanilla defensive looks, and it forces these secondary players to tackle well in space. Right now, Michael Downing, number 16, a backup weak safety. He's been playing the majority of the second quarter and now starts the second half. First down at the 34. Off to Taylor again, and he runs right into Ty Summers. TCU is going to have to find a way with this fast tempo to change the picture on Mason Rudolph. They can't sit in this same defense on every snap because Rudolph is just picking it apart. So Gary Patterson's going to have to plan ahead and make, make sure some of those calls are pre-planned before the drive so they know on second down or on third down they're going to bring a pressure or change the picture, meaning they're going to roll to a one safety look rather than a two safety look. Second and eight at the 36. Rudolph. Looking over the middle, Rudolph steps up and tripped up as he crosses the line of scrimmage by Josh Carraway. Josh Carraway, four and a half sacks on the year. They're finally starting to disrupt the timing. Great job from his defensive end spot of always continuing to play. He was blocked initially when Rudolph stepped up in the pocket. His effort allowed him to get back into the play and make this a long yardage third down situation. So TCU with the chance to get off the field on Oklahoma State's first series of the second half. Third down and eight at the 36. Rudolph has gone deep in situations like this. Rudolph looking incomplete. And no flag on the play. Glidden, the intended receiver in coverage, 
Denzel Johnson. And now Oklahoma State will punt. Denzel Johnson didn't turn back for the ball, but remember, face guarding is not a foul in college football. Only contact would have drawn a flag. So excellent job by the officials keeping that flag in their pocket. And TCU gets a huge stop here to start Oklahoma State in the first series of the second half. Zach Siner punting from his own 21. Cavante Turpin back deep. He can change the game with his return ability. Turpin inside the 20. And this time he's taken down at the 15. Good special teams play. Shepard leading the way. Brandon Shepard. But here comes Trevon Boykin. Fox College Football presented by K Jewelers is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. And by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. And by Fallout 4. The next generation of open world gaming available on November 10th. Old Pickens Stadium, Trevon Boykin has a lot of work in front of him, and he recently has set the school record, passing Andy Dalton with 10,321 yards passing for his career. But more importantly for him, remaining undefeated, and that means beating Oklahoma State. False start. Offense number three, five yard penalty, first down. And Sean Nixon, and there's Dotson, towel over his head, not a good sign. Injured that wrist in the second quarter. As Molly told us, Gary Patterson telling Molly that he's doubtful for this second half. Let's just hope that it's not broken. First down and a long 15 at the 14 for Boykin. Boykin to throw it over the middle. Intercepted! Whitener! 10-yard line, Whitener! Touchdown! Chad Whitener! Started this season as a backup. Comes into the starting lineup after Ryan Simmons was lost due to injury. I think his foot was out before he actually scored the touchdown. But regardless, what an enormous play from the sophomore from Mansfield, Texas. Transferred from Cal, where he played in a limited role as a true freshman back in 2013. Came here to Stillwater as a walk-on. Earned a scholarship prior to fall camp this season. It comes up with one of the biggest plays of the season so far for the Cowboys. Boy, whether he got in or not, which it doesn't look like he did, what a great play from Whitener. That's when doing your job pays off. Drops in the perfect spot. Boykin didn't see him. And that's his second interception of the day. So this play under review and pretty obvious that Whitener did step out of bounds before he got in the end zone. Boy, who says there's no defense in the Big 12? Yeah, who says that? How about these Cowboys? And what is it? What have they done to confuse Trevon Boykin? They have jammed the wide receivers at the After line of scrimmage. Review, the runner stepped out at the one and a half yard line. The ball will be placed at the one yard line. First down, Oklahoma State. They're playing into their bread and butter, which is their rush. Emmanuel Ogba, that front seven. They jam the wide receivers, force Trevon Bo Boykin to hold the football longer than he wants to. And because of that, they're making huge plays. So you're saying their timing is off. They're disrupting their timing. They've got no timing because of the jam at the line of scrimmage. This secondary is what has propelled this unit, the defensive unit for Oklahoma State during the course of this day. And they're allowing the linebackers and defensive linemen to disrupt Trevon Boykin's timing in the pocket. It's been masterful. A great game plan from Glenn Spencer and great execution by these kids. First down and goal at the one yard line. Carr and Taylor in the backfield. And this is Rudolph with the quarterback run. Touchdown, Cowboys. No, excuse me, J.W. That's his special. 
Kaczuki. The inevitable touchdown after the interception from J.W. Walsh, the senior from Denton, Texas. Ben Grogan for the extra point. Oklahoma State has converted opponents' turnovers into 100 points this season, most in the Big 12. J.W. Walsh finding the end zone. How about this? TCU in major trouble. Fox College Football presented by Kay Jewelers is sponsored by AT&T. DirecTV and AT&T are now one, bringing television and wireless together. Welcome back. USAA honors all who dared to serve. Visit USAA.com slash Veterans Day. Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, Molly McGrath with you from Boom Pickett Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And this Cowboy defense, I tell you, they will make you pay if you slip. Boy, they are fast, too. I haven't seen a defense in this conference this fast in the secondary all season long. Athletes, Joel. That's why they can play this coverage against these great wide receivers. And now these inexperienced wide receivers with Dotson out. Javante Turpin inside his own five. And Turpin with a nice move gets to the 30. Bounces outside at the 40. And finally steps out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Nice return by Kevante Turpin. Just look at the coverage down the field. This is what Javon Boykin has been looking at. Double coverage on his best guy, Josh Dotson, who now is not even available. Then on the other side, all the athletes running, eyes in the backfield, doing a great job. No one running free. Anyone that's open is going to be short. Boykin trying to force the ball down the field and then doesn't even see Whitehair. Whitener who just picks that one off, his second interception, Boykin through of the game so far, and Coach Gundy recognizing his defense's effort on the sideline. 21 straight points by Oklahoma State. First down and 10, TCU at the 46. Boykin, near side, Sean Nixon. And he'll get close to midfield. Trace Clark, Seth Jacobs combining on the tackle. So if you're TCU, how do you get back in this game? I, I think that you have to establish the short passing game, get the ball out of Boykin's hand, hands quickly, and establish the run. And what you're trying to do is get the safeties up near the line of scrimmage so that Lissenby can get down the field for a big play. Second down and seven at the 49. Boykin sprints out of the pocket, now turns it up himself, picks up the first, and goes down. Javon Boykin using his legs on that carry as Emmanuel Agba makes the tackle. Here's the difficult part for Boykin is as soon as you lose your weapons, the guys that you trust, as a quarterback you tend to press and want to try to do too much and force the ball down the field. He still needs to take what the defense gives him. First and 10 of the 43. Boykin, far side, Turpin squares his shoulders and picks up a first down. So now we get to see Sonny Cumbie and Doug Meacham, the two coordinators. What kind of adjustments do they make to move this football? What are we seeing so far? Short passing, ball out of the hand of Trevon Boykin so far, very quickly on this series. First and 10 of the 30. Green with a big hole. And Aaron Green falls forward, close to another first down. Jordan Stearns bringing him down. That's exactly the transition you're seeing, Gus. Exactly what I was talking about. Ball out of his hand and then establish the run game to try to draw the safeties up so that down the line you can get number seven, Colby Listenby, open down the field. He's a sprinter. Second down and two at the 22. Here's the reverse. Turpin. Does he want to throw it? No. He's running it and will be tackled for a loss. Great job by this Oklahoma State defense. Vincent Taylor, Darian Daniels staying home, a loss of two. Disciplined defense. That's all you got to do if you're Oklahoma State. Stay disciplined. Read the offensive key that you're supposed to and do what you're coached to do. Third down and four at the 24. Boykin over the middle, first down, Nixon. As he crawls to the 12, Chad Whitener with the tackle from behind. 
How many times did we see in the first half Boykin holding the ball, holding the ball, spinning around, now ball out of his hand very quickly. First down. And it's Green running. And he'll get to the five. What a great cut he made. Some elusiveness, even in a tight space, able to get away from the Oklahoma State defender. Second down to three at the five. Green again. Dives forward. And it looks like they'll spot it at the one-inch line. Gives him the first and goal as he reached and tried to reach the end zone. First and goal at the one. TCU wasting no time. Second rushing touchdown of the day for Trevon Boykin. When TCU needed that score like they needed air to breathe. A uh, 20 point deficit before this point after attempt. As Trevon Boykin has a determined look on his face, a lot on the line. TCU wants to get into that playoff. They felt that they were disrespected last year by not getting in. As Overcrown picks the extra point. Also, the subtext in this game for Trevon Boykin, the Heisman Trophy. Welcome back. TCU has had to come from behind twice this season. September 26th in Lubbock, Aaron Green caught the game winner. Then on October 10th, Josh Dotson's 55-yard touchdown catch with just over a minute to go sealed the victory for the Horned Frogs. Had been here before. Not quite like this and not quite like this opponent. Oklahoma State has been so good here today. Overcrow will send it away. Jeff Carr, the deep man. And he'll let this one go out of the end zone. So Oklahoma State will start from their 25. As Mason Rudolph prepares to come back on the field, you got to give these offensive coaches a lot of love for what they have done in that first half and all season long. Mike Yurchich has done a great job and, and really ever since the halfway point of last season and making the decision to go ahead and pull the red shirt off of Mason Rudolph. That's what set them up for this run to start the season 8-0 to play with a quarterback now that's not in his first season. He's had the experience of being the starter in the offseason. We're seeing that payoff here down the stretch. First down and 10 of the 25. Rudolph play fake rolls out. Dumps it down, caught McCleskey, oh, he got mugged. A good old fashioned Derek Kindred, New York City, mugging. Kindred is sick of getting beat deep. He came up with some vengeance right there. The senior from San Antonio, Texas. Last season was honorable mention, all Big 12. Started all 13 games. This guy can play some football now, and you're starting to see this TCU team now play with a little energy that we did not see from them in the first half. Second down and nine to the 26. The answer for that for Oklahoma State has been James Washington. Rudolph looking down the field. Rudolph caught James Washington. The answer, 74 yards. When you're backed into a corner, you look for your best players. To start the game, they went to Washington, and now desperately needing a big play to change the momentum of this second half. Rudolph looks nowhere else but number 28, James Washington. Washington with touchdowns of 48, 50, and 74 yards. Last week, he had a 75-yard touchdown and a 73-yard touchdown. Who is this kid? James Washington, the name. Oklahoma State Cowboy. James Washington, he had an offer to go to TCU. Gary Patterson may be thinking to himself right now, man, we should have worked harder to get this kid. What 
a uh, couple of games for James Washington. You know, he's from a couple hours away from Lubbock, and so when he went down to face Texas Tech last week, there were all sorts of people from his hometown there to watch him play because he was a legend in high school, four sports star, and he struggled a little bit early, had a couple of drops, and then came on just like shot out of a rocket in the second half of that game. The two big touchdowns in the fourth quarter, and he's carried it over to face TCU here at home today. Turpin from the four yard line. And Turpin gets to the 25. Well, let's take a look at the human highlight film of James Washington. And I love that it started early. You know, the first couple of series, they went right to him and tried to continue that hot hand from what he had the week previous with those two touchdowns in the fourth quarter of over 70 yards. And now, when they needed it, right, the momentum had changed. Boykin had just gone down the field for a score, and they went right to Gus, the answer. The answer. James Washington, man, he can play some football. 31 catches, 588 yards coming into this game. First down and 10. 8.01 to go third quarter. Boykin to Turpin. And Turpin breaks a tackle, picks up a first down. TCU needs to continue that same game plan that they had on the last series. They do it here on the first play. Ball quickly out to Kevante Turpin. Takes it for a first down. You know, the last thing you want your defense to do if you're Oklahoma State is start sitting on their heels. They've been so good because they've been aggressive. They need to continue that aggressiveness here. 42 to 16 to score. First down at the 44 for TCU. Boykin. Intercepted again. Trey Flowers says, give it here and don't say nothing. The Oklahoma State defense balling out. Today in Stillwater, third interception for Boykin. Trey Flowers' eyes just staring into the backfield. He's just squatting and then breaks on the ball. That's the aggressiveness I was just referring to. Boykin forcing the issue into squatting defenders, throws his third interception of the game. It's a great job by Trey Flowers, the sophomore. Too many times when defenses are playing too conservatively, too cautiously, those safeties will just back out of there for no reason. The read didn't tell him to back out. The ruling on the field is an interception by Oklahoma State. That ruling is under further review. Take a look to see if he controlled this going all the way to the ground. Sure looked like it from the last look that we saw, but it would be a good look. He takes it into his right hand as he's going to the ground. That should be an interception. Yeah, you bet. You Never bet. Great moves. job of cradling that football. Remember, the ball can touch the ground as long as it doesn't jostle. If you maintain control, that's a catch. Flowers maintains control for that interception. What a game he's played here today. He's this secondary for... Oklahoma State, I'll tell you what, they've got some athletes, Joel. They can run. And not only do they have athletes, they have athletes that have been coached so well, they can get the most out of their athleticism because they know where they need to go, gotta, regardless of what TCU does. i got to give a lot of credit. You know, Glenn Spencer, obviously the defensive coordinator, has done a great job. But the safeties coach, Dan Hammerschmidt. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. They've got two coaches in the secondary. Tim, Dan Hammerschmidt Tim handles, and Tim Duffy handles the corners. Boy, they, they have done so well because it's not just about the plan. You know, schematics are just schematics. Sometimes technique rules the day. And what you're seeing, like Trey Flowers right there, that was all individual coaching. This is your technique on this play, and then he executes it perfectly. Squat on the route, eyes in the backfield, break on the ball, and he did it. Bam. First down and 10 at the 48. For Oklahoma State, here's reverse flowers. They give it to Rudolph. Eight man. Incomplete. Oklahoma State going for the jugular. Up 42 to 16. <laughs> I love the call. I love the call. You get a turnover just on 
the TCU side of the 50 plus territory. Why not take a shot? 42 to 16. Boy, that would have almost sealed it, even though it's still in the third quarter. Just falls out of his arms as he's going to the ground. Second down and 10 at the 48 yard line. J.W. Walsh in the game now. He'll throw it far side, and it's caught. Jeff Carr. As Denzel Johnson brings him down. TCU just fighting for extra possessions here. That's what the defense has to do. You fight, claw, scratch, do everything at your disposal to get the ball back to your offense. Doesn't have to be a turnover. You don't have to take chances. Just get yourself off the field and get your offense back out there to see if they can cut into this deficit. That's their charge. Mason Rudolph back in the game. Third down and 12 at midfield. Rudolph with time, steps up, runs it himself, and it goes down at 45. Torrance Mosley chops his legs out. Good decision by Rudolph, better coverage down the field than we saw in the first half. No free Cowboys running loose on those curl routes in the intermediate zones, and then Ty Summers coming flying in there, the redshirt freshman from San Antonio. Last TCU defender to make contact with Rudolph as he was going out of bounds. So the fifth punt of the game for Zach Siner. Devontae Turpin will stand at his own 10. Siner at the 41. Go Sam, go Sam, go, go. And over in kick. It's been working. Fair caught at the 10. 5.54 to play in the third, 42 to 16. Trevon Boykin. Has struggled. Nightmarish day for the Heisman contender. Early in this game, throws the pick on the out route, then right into the arms of Chad Whitener. And on the last series, Trey Flowers sits on it, reads his eyes, and jumps all over the Boykin delivery. This is as bad as he struggled in his career, at least his career since Doug Meacham and Sonny Cumbie came to Fort Worth. First down and 10 at the 11, Aaron Green in the backfield. Swing it out far side, Turpin looking for room, and he is leveled. Turpin unable to go forward. Looks like Jordan Burton got it. You know, another thing that Oklahoma State has now been able to do is implore their 3-4 their scheme. So now they can play with more players on the second and third level and only rush with three defensive linemen because of this margin up 42-16. Second and six. This time it's Nixon. Nice move. Nixon picks up the first down. What do you mean when you say second and third level? What's the level? The linebacker level and the secondary level. If the first level is at the line of scrimmage with the defensive linemen, second level of the linebackers, third level is the secondary, the safeties. And the more people you can put at the second and third level, the more difficult it is to throw the ball because there's more players in those throwing lanes. I want me to make sure that I ask you, you that question. <laughs> you got the first down and 10, Boykin. And he skips one far side for Listen to. Well, I haven't seen him out of sorts like this in a year and a half. Oklahoma State's gotten into his, into his head. Yeah, he's playing. His, his physical clock right now is quicker than what's going on around him. He's not being patient like he normally is in the pocket. How do you get it back? Easy completions. Got to find them. Second and 10 of the 22. And it's green. Cuts it back, nice run, keeps his feet churning and gets close to the first down. Trey Flowers, Trace Clark combining on the tackle. Third down and one. Green, first down. Good cut from Green. Flowers was flying up there. But Green was able to get skinny, find that hole, and dive for the first down as Oklahoma State now runs fresh defensive linemen out there, including Emmanuel Ogba, number 38, who's back on the field near side as a down lineman. First down and 10 at the 36. And Boykins decides to run it. 
with room. And a flag on the play. He lost the ball, but he should be down. Emmanuel Agba with the tackle. Holding offense number 77. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. That's Jamil Naff, the senior from Dell City, Oklahoma. It looked like that ball was coming loose. That ball was definitely loose and on the ground. At the end of that play, and they will stop it. The ruling on the field of the runner down by rule is under further review. And remember now to avoid, to ex excuse me, to reward the ball to the opposing team on a potential turnover. Ball clearly loose. It's coming out, and it's at the right hip of Trevon Boykin as he goes down in that shin, hits the ground. But then is there a clear recovery by Oklahoma State? I would say yes. Emmanuel Ogba was the man who was making the tackle on Boykin. Well, Oklahoma State clearly recovered the ball. Mote Mile is the one who recovered this ball. Mike Pereira, what are you seeing from this play? Well, the ball starts to come loose, Joel, as you say. It's very close when you look at it from the angles. You know, they're going to have to make the two decisions, as you said. First, to see if it's a fumble. Second, is there a clear recovery? That one's easy because there is a clear recovery. But is the knee down? You know, I'm kind of in the mode where I'm hoping that they stay with these calls when they're that close. And um, I'm not sure, although the ball moved a little bit, I wasn't. Really not sure that he totally lost control, but before that left knee got on the ground, the left shin is on the ground. Watch the left shin there. Boy, that is so close. And you're right. In order to go back and actually change this and give the ball to Oklahoma State, they would have to have some clear evidence. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Mike, even though you and I probably both assume that that ball is coming loose, uh, Safe to say you're happy with the decision to let it stand. I, I think, Joel, really what he's saying is, and I think it's right, that no matter which way they call that, they would have stayed with it. It's that close. And replay needs to go in with a bias that the call on the field originally was right. And there has to be conclusive evidence to overturn it. And I really don't think there was. First down to 20 at the 26. Boykin keeps it. Boykin going down close to the 35. Boy, this is one gutsy individual effort. This guy is without his left tackle, Alapuli Vati Vaitai. It's without his great wide receiver, Josh Dotson. He struggled with injuries all season long. Second and 13. Boykin, far side. Stewart, and Stewart wrapped up quickly. Tell you what, this Oklahoma State defense, George Stearns leading the way. Just so quick to the football. Showing an ability to bring their opponents down in space. Watch out for Emmanuel Ogba. Great defensive end. This is his territory, third and long. Third down and 12. Boykin. On the run, incomplete. The timing with all these freshman receivers just clearly off with Trevon Boykin. He's got Jerison Stewart, a true freshman, number 14. Jalen Austin, a true freshman, number 15. Sean Nixon, number three, a redshirt freshman, all on the field. And right now, this passing game is all out of sorts. And this will be the fourth punt for Perry. He delivers the Aussie rules kick. And 
and the ball will be spotted at the 25. Huddle up with college football experts in live web chats all season long. A new guest every week. The Edward Jones College Football Huddle on FoxSports.com. 2.36 to play third quarter. Oklahoma State with the football and the lead over eighth-ranked TCU, 42-16. to Horn Frogs felt they were disrespected when the college football playoff rankings came out and they fell to number eight. Oklahoma State showing them a different side today. As Taylor runs the football and he spins and goes down. I haven't seen a TCU team in the last two years basically stifle yeah. like this Oklahoma State team is done to him today. You know, talent-wise, this Oklahoma State defense is one of, if not the best, in the conference. And Gary Patterson has had to try to develop his young defense. A couple of safeties to begin the season, now playing linebacker Howard and Wilson. And right now, they've been taken advantage of by this offense. J.W. Walsh handing it off. Taylor again, looking for the first down. And J.W. Walsh is an interesting story. That's because he opted not to use his graduate transfer option and go to a school where he might have started. So, in a sense, Mike Gundy has been rewarding him for his loyalty to the program. And he helps them. There's no doubt. His inclusion into the game plan, J.W. Walsh, it helps their running game. And it allows Oklahoma State to prepare with Rudolph and not allow the defense to scheme against Rudolph because they've got to prepare for so much. It's really a smart, brilliant game plan. Third down and one at the 34. Walsh keeps it looking for the first down and he will not get it. Denzel Johnson has had a fine game. Junior from Gainesville, Texas. Oh, he finally made a bad read here. Watch the defensive end is going to come up the field, and there's actually a hole there for Taylor just on third and one, remember, to get the first down. That right there should be a give from the quarterback, but Walsh pulls that ball out and tries to get him himself, and now they're forced to punt. I believe Taylor would have moved the chains there and gotten a first down. Zach Siner will punt from his own 19. Cavante Turpin back deep at the 25. And he drives this one. Turpin back pedaling. Has it, Turpin, looking for a lane, Turpin, turns, Turpin still moving, and he gets to the 35, a 52-yard punt and a 21-yard return for Cavante Turpin. Now the UFC returns to FS1 with a full card of action headlined by what should be a wild rematch between middleweight contenders Vidor Belfort and Dan Henderson. And after splitting their first two bouts against each other, it all comes down to this fight, UFC Fight Night, begins tonight at 7 Eastern on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. This defense came in leading the Big 12 in turnovers force, sacks and tackles for loss, rushing defense. They haven't disappointed. Travis Johnson running the football, and he picks up a first down, spins, stays on his feet, and gets inside Oklahoma State territory. Trey Flowers. Brings him to the turf. And Johnson again. Trey Flowers again with the tackle. Six-yard gain after a 16-yard gain. I know it's a large deficit, and, and the clock is definitely a factor now as we're inside of 10 seconds. I don't know if they'll get another snap off here before the quarter ends. And they do. And it's Johnson trying to get outside, and Johnson Goes down for a loss. Jordan Burton again. The story today, this young man, only a sophomore. He's been pitching and catching. 42 to 16. Welcome back to Fox College Football presented by Kate Jewelers. Start of the fourth quarter. Oklahoma State one quarter away from notching the first major upset since the college football playoff rankings came out. As you take a look. A lot of numbers for TCU, but not very many results. Third down and five of the 43, only 16 points. 
They average 49 points per game. Over the middle, incomplete. And that is second in Division I. Flag on the play. They're going to get Michael Hunter, number 17, graduate transfer from Indiana, came in. He's played really well for them. Pass interference, defense number 17. That foul will be enforced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Boy, I, I didn't see much there. I know he put his hands on him, but he didn't alter the movement of the wide receiver. It wasn't forcible contact. But an automatic first down for TCU. At the 36. Hicks. And Hicks, nice run. As he hops across the line of scrimmage, Trey Flowers again defensively. Oklahoma State's doing just an excellent job of pursuing the football and tackling the ball carrier. Forcing TCU to snap it several times more than they want to. This is normally a quick strike offense that has had to be very methodical here today. Second and six at the 32. Boykin. They fired down the field. He's got Lissenby. Caught. Touchdown. TCU. 32 yards. And they finally get loose down the field. There's that big play that they've been needing. Remember, listen, B, a 10 300 meter sprinter. Hard to keep up with him for number 17, Michael Hunter, and a great throw from Trevon Boykin. Right on the money in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. 42 to 22. Start of the fourth quarter. Trevon Boykin, last time he was here, he was 17 of 35, 188 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions. He's thrown three interceptions today. But a lot of time remaining. Listen, B, finally getting loose. College football presented by K Jewelers is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Direct TV, don't just watch TV, Direct TV. And by K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. Welcome back, 42 to 23, Oklahoma State. Leading TCU, Trevon Boykin finding Colby Listenby. 24th straight game with a touchdown pass, longest active streak. In FBS. And that one was a beautiful throw. I mean, that, that was not a big window down the field to listen be in the back of the end zone that he was able to get. They're going to need some heroics. I mean, they don't even just need fireworks. They need heroics. They need their defense to get the ball. Desperately. They need a turnover. Again, extra possessions is what TCU needs. To stay undefeated here. Jaden Obercrome will kick it away. Jeff Carr, the deep man for Oklahoma State. And he'll kick it short, trying to catch Oklahoma State off guard. And they don't. Nicely done as the Cowboys were prepared for such a play. Brian. Suzuki returning it. And his team has had some big games in the past, knocking off top 10 opponents. They beat Missouri in 2012. They beat Stanford, a team that was ranked fourth. They're used to these stages. Mike Gundy has done a great job with this program. This offense has played well tonight. This defense has done such a nice job against Trevon Boykin, and now they've got a chance to close this one out here in the fourth. First down to 10 at the 48. And this is Childs, Winnie Childs. Denzel Johnson, Traven Howard combining. This is the point in time in a game where you just want those big guys up front to take over. not allow Boykin back on the field, not allow him those extra possessions that he needs to come back in this game. Second down and three at the 41. Oh. 
Rudolph throwing. Jeff Carr gets back to the line of scrimmage. Couldn't stay on his feet. If he could have stayed on his feet, he had a shot at that first down. Yeah, he absolutely did. That ball thrown well behind him, way too low to the ground. And now TCU has an opportunity, and they'll go to J.W. Walsh, who runs in along with number 30, Raymond Taylor, who's been very dangerous at the running back position here tonight. Third down and four at the 42. J.W. Walsh, he's the runner. Walsh keeping it, thrive on the play. And it looks like he has the first down. You're going to get Michael Wilson here on a hold, number 74. Holding offense, number 74. 10 yards from the previous spot, replay third down. Here's Michael Wilson. Watch, he's going to just get tripped up. His feet get too close together, and as he's going down, he just drags the defender down with him, and the flag comes out. So now, just an excellent opportunity for TCU to get the ball right back to their offense. But what does Mike Gundy have in store? Third down and 14. Where's number 28? He's at the bottom of your screen at wide receiver. James Washington. Rudolph back in the game. Rudolph, near side. Incomplete. TCU doing their job. The defense scoring a victory. And now they'll give it back to this man. Boy, and he had him. He had him open. Better execution there, and it's first down Oklahoma State, but that ball was low. And now we've got a situation here. Turpin back and TCU with some time. Turpin almost broke one the last time he touched the ball. Siner drives it. Turpin has it at the 10. Travon Boykin still with life. Well, here's what's on the line. With 12-22 left, 16-game winning streak for Gary Patterson and the TCU Horned Frogs. Of course, facing a team that's not too shabby themselves as it relates to winning streaks with Oklahoma State at 10 right now, both in the top six in the country in that category. First down and 10 for Trevon Boykin at his own 10-yard line. And Boykin to throw on first down. Rolling. Boykin back to the line of scrimmage before being knocked out of bounds. Boy, he had Cavante Turpin wide open right on the sidelines, about 15 yards down the field here on the near side, but could never get his arm back because of the pressure being put on him by that Oklahoma State front. It was very close to a big play, but you got to credit that pressure and pursuit from Oklahoma State. A loss of a yard, second down and 11. And he'll hand it off to Green. Breaks it inside. And he'll get to the 14 before being brought down. Darian Daniels and Chad Whitener with the tackle. Third down and seven now at the 13. Big play for TCU. They have to stay on the field. Turpin is really their best possession wide receiver. He's the one that Boykin would most likely trust in this situation. Remember, listen, he just caught a touchdown for Boykin. Boykin, all day, Boykin looking, now runs it, cuts it back, dives forward and picks up the first. He has such an awareness of where he is on the field at all times. His eyes stay downfield and yet he maintains a suddenness that you would only expect from a running back who's actually carrying the football. It's as if he's still ready to pull the trigger and get it downfield and throws a juke move still for the first down. Really amazing athleticism. Boykin has played running back and wide receiver during his time at TCU. First and 10 of the 21. The handoff to Green. This is the exact type of series that Oklahoma State wanted. Chewing up that clock, allowing the clock to run. 
they will be just fine watching Trevon Boykin hand the ball off to Aaron Green all the way down the field. Second and eight. They'll hand it off again to Green. And this time, Green is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage because Jarrell Owens had great pressure coming up the field. See all those defenders back standing up with their eyes on the quarterback. So Boykin, when they call that run play, he's got to give it because they're defending him. And then those down front three have been winning and now putting them in these long yardage third down situations. Third and seven at the 24. Empty backfield for Boykin. He ran for the first down, first down the last time. Boykin steps up over the middle. Caught first down, Sean Nixon. Wow, what courage from Nixon to hang on to that ball. He got absolutely drilled up in the air, hangs on to the ball as he gets bent all the way backwards. Retains possession for the first down. What an amazing catch from Sean Nixon. Amazing game. Seven catches, 128 yards. First and 10 at the 36. Boykin steps back, looking over the middle again. And caught by Nixon again. If you weren't with us at the end of the first half, the major story for TCU, Josh Dotson going out of the game with a wrist injury. He has not returned. The All-American wide receiver was on his way to another great game. He's on the sideline right now. Second down and three at the 43. Boykin throws it out. Stewart falls forward, and he's short of the first down. He needs about a half a yard. Evan Peterson. That's awfully close. They're going to stop the clock. Based on the spot by the far side official, looks like that nose of the football is actually touching that 46 yard line, which would make this a first down. He's on top. There's the elbow down. I think that spot was way too generous based on that right elbow and where the ball actually was. Hard for that far side official to see that because the ball was actually hidden behind him. He's just short. Third down in inches. They've run that quarterback sneak a couple of times in this situation with Trevon Boykin without Dotson on the field. Boykin clearly their best weapon. This is a four minute drive for TCU. But they've only gone 33 yards. That plays right into the hands of Oklahoma State. They've done a great job just keeping everything in front of them. Rallying up and making the tackle with good pursuit. Lots of what you would call hats or defenders at the ball carrier. Now forcing another third down opportunity here. Boykin to the line of scrimmage. He'll pitch it. Hicks throws it. Turpin was open. And now it's fourth down. Kevin Peterson was right in Hicks's face. Boy, they had him wide open. Cavante Turpin running. Wide open down the field. Hicks knew it. That he missed an opportunity there. So fourth and inches. TCU going for it. No other choice. And the quarterback sneak. And first down. Chad Whitener trying to take Boykin's head off. How smart is this guy, Trevon Boykin? Not a designed quarterback sneak. He just looks at the defense and he walks up, takes a snap from center, and runs for a first down. First down and 10. Ball at the 47. Boykin. Near side. Listen, he is open. 
turns it up. Listen, he's still running, trying to get free, and finally delivers a lick as he's tackled a first down at the Oklahoma State 41. Well, they've got to get going here. A touchdown and an extra point would make this 42 to 30. They need to get it to that point by about seven and a half. And they run it with Green. And Green close to a first down. And again, look at all the black jerseys around the ball carrier. They're just doing a great job, Oklahoma State, of rallying up and making those tackles, forcing them to snap it again. Boykin running, first down, and more. Boykin needs to get out of bounds, and he does to stop the clock. Jordan Stearns pushing him out after the 15-yard pickup. About the point on the field where on last series they threw that fade route to Colby Lissenby. That speed is so dangerous, he would have to get out of his hand very quickly to the back of the end zone, but a lot of time rolling off the clock. 14th play of the drive. They had it for five minutes. Boykin drops it off. Stewart. And he is tackled at the 15 again. Jordan Burton. Another great open field tackle by this Oklahoma State defense, forcing TCU to continue to snap the ball with the clock continuing to run. Excellent job. Ben don't break style of defense. Turpin in motion out of the backfield. Over the middle, wide open receiver. And this will be Sean Nixon who's having the game of his life. He's down inside the five. When he has stepped up and Josh Dotson instead gotten open several times on crucial downs in order to move the chains. Nine catches, 146 yards. First and goal at the four. And they'll hand it off to Green. Green goes down around the two. Clock continues to run. Come up with something quick. Slant route for that zone read, allowing Boykin to run. Now they'll get into an odd formation. Boykin runs it, looking, turns it back, and will not get in. Great job by Oklahoma State. They're so disciplined, Gus. They know exactly where to line up, even in the odd formation. Then they pursue to the football, and they have been excellent in tackling so far tonight. Whitener and Stearns with the tackle. 18th play of the drive. Third and goal. Green cuts it back, leads forward, doesn't get in. No, he does. They give it to him. Touchdown. Eric Davis, number 97, is going to be the one that makes first contact. Green trying to drag him into the end zone and reaching with that right arm. There the knee is down. Boy, that's he tough to tell. I didn't think he get in. I didn't think so either. It's hard to tell on that angle whether when the knee actually touched, but Based on that, where is momentum stop? Because that ball looked like it was. The ruling on the field of touchdown is under further review. Mike Pereira in Los Angeles, our rules analyst. Mike, what'd you see? I'll tell you, the one shot looks like the ball is actually down short of the goal line. Then he extends it in. You see you've got the left knee down there. It's a key play because, remember, if they rule this short, then they are going to start the clock on the ready for play. So they're going to actually lose more time, and that's your key there. We already know the knee is down. So to me, it certainly does look short, so they would reset it there. It would become fourth down, and the clock would start on the referee's whistle. Or be incumbent on Boykin and this coaching staff to have them ready up at the line of scrimmage, ready to go in order to try to save time and get into the end zone as quickly as they possibly can. Gus, I'm with Mike. That definitely looks short. I think we're all seeing the same thing here.
Right now, the head coach and defensive coordinator having a conversation. Glenn Spencer, Mike Gundy. Just can't say enough good stuff about Mike Gundy, though. The winningest coach in Oklahoma State history, 2011 National Coach of the Year after leading his team to a 12-1 record, the first ever Big 12 title. Had a Fiesta Bowl victory over Stanford and finished number three in the polls. Nobody saw Oklahoma State coming this year, especially after last season in which the Cowboys struggled to find out who their quarterback was. So Coach Gundy rolls the dice. He puts this freshman in, takes his red shirt off after the 11th game of the season, yeah. and it turned out to be a stroke of genius. Yeah, because the momentum was gained. You know, they win the Bedlam game. They defeat their rival Oklahoma, and then they went on and, and had an offseason to prepare and plan for not just Mason Rudolph, but also J.W. Walsh and, and that dual game plan for those quarterbacks. After further review, the runner's knee was down with the ball short of the goal line. It'll be fourth down, the ball will be spotted just outside the goal line. And they were the forgotten school in this whole Big 12 conversation. Oklahoma, TCU, Baylor, primarily TCU and Baylor. And here's Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State ranked, will pick to finish fourth by the Big 12 media behind TCU, Baylor, Oklahoma. At the beginning of the year, fourth down and goal. And this defense has had an ability to make big plays all day. This could be the ball game if they can hold right here. Fourth down. Boykin running. Boykin. No! Chad Wagner. The defense makes the biggest play of the night. Cowboys on a roll. stand for Oklahoma State and the Cowboys are 5 21 away from defeating eighth ranked TCU as Rudolph will give them some room and those faces tell the story here in Stillwater Oklahoma such a promising season for TCU the Litnikoff award candidate goes out with that rich wrist in injury Josh Dotson three times today TCU has driven 60 or more yards and got no points that drive 19 plays 89 yards they ate up seven minutes to come up empty Raymond Taylor in the backfield and Mason Rudolph will sneak it again and he'll cross the five In this league, you just quite simply have to use different defensive metrics to measure how good your defense is playing. You cannot just look at total defense and scoring defense. All of these coordinators talk about it. Phil Bennett from Baylor, Glenn Spencer from Oklahoma State. These guys constantly stress, listen, you're going to give up yards. You're facing 18 possessions, not 12 possessions like you are in other conferences. Today's a great example. They've given up some yards, but they've gotten stops when they needed to. And Rudolph will run it again on third down, and you have to consider, last week, Oklahoma State gave up 53 points in Lubbock as they defeated Texas Tech 70 to 53. Today, they're taking on a team that's set, ranked second in the nation in scoring second in the nation in total offense fourth in the nation in passing offense and they've held them to 23 points 352 to go back after this
Fox College Football presented by K Jewelers is sponsored by Dr. Pepper and college football. It's a one of a kind tradition. 42 to 23 Oklahoma State. Two minutes make that three minutes and 52 seconds away from scoring their biggest victory of the season. Mike Gundy. Are we going to get a smile from Mike Gundy today? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. We've been covering Oklahoma State for five years. I don't think I've ever seen him smile. <laughs> Does he have teeth? Oh. Unsung hero today, this man, Zach Siner. He's pinned TCU deep four times. Turpin unable to go anywhere. And that's Kirk Tucker with the tackle. There's Siner. Let's go to Jenny Taft in Los Angeles for a game break. Gus, thanks. Here's an update on number one Clemson and number 16 Florida State. This one was close all day, but under three minutes to go, the Tigers put it away as Wayne Gallman takes it 25 yards for the touchdown. Final score, Clemson wins 23-13, and it is rocking in Death Valley. Gus Joel, back to you guys. It's a big win in a tight ball game. They've struggled so badly with Florida State the last couple of years. That Clemson team now not many threats to an undefeated season. Boykin delivers underneath, and he's got his man. It's Cavante Turpin who picks up 19 yards. Think about how well this defense has played. That was the 98th snap they've had to see here today. And they've still been dominant. First down, Boykin looking. And he wants to run it, breaks a tackle, stays on his feet, tries to get out of bounds and does back to the line of scrimmage. No game. The effort has been tremendous. Talking with Glenn Spencer and Mike Gundy, they all just shrugged their shoulders. How do you defend Trevon Boykin? They shrugged their shoulders. Say, Great effort, discipline, tackle well. Guess what his defense has done here today? They've played with great effort, great discipline, and they've tackled extremely well. Second down and 11. Boykin losing a yard on the last play. Ron in trouble, spinning, steps back, drops it off, and it's Aaron Green. Green taken down. That's Kenneth Edison Magruder. And there's a lot of people, myself included, that thought Oklahoma State was going to arrive at this point in the season at 8-0. There wasn't a lot of people that was expecting them to leave this point in the season at 9-0. We're 242 away from doing that. Third and three, Boykin. Fires, caught inside the five. Turpin leads forward and gets to the one. TCU fighting into the very end. There's always a chance. 233 left. Chance for an onside kick. And a hand it off, Green. Touchdown. But a flag. Defenders from Oklahoma State trying to run off the field. They didn't quite get off the field. There are two fouls on the play. Offside on the defense. Illegal substitution on the defense. Both of those are declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Well, that's exactly what they needed. A quick strike. And with the endings of some of these ball games in college football this year, nothing is over until those numbers strike zero. So the TCU offense remaining on the field going for two. Remember, Obergro missed an extra point in the first quarter. Aaron Green, the pistol back. Boykin in the corner. And broken up. Great job by Trey Flowers. 42 to 29, 228 to go. Waiting for the Horned Frogs, 221 to go. Timeout on the field. TCU 42 to 29 Oklahoma State
42 to 29, Oklahoma State. Cowboys, second and seven. J.W. Walsh, dives forward. Stopped by Michael Downing. And another timeout call by TCU. And we'll take a quick break back after this. Dave & Buster's is the best place to watch your team with your crew on game day. Your favorite football apps, just $5 on Sundays and Mondays. Dozens of beers, crafts, ciders, and lagers. Oh, yeah. And massive TVs, ginormous TVs. I mean, surrounded by TVs. That's a lot of TVs. And it's Dave & Buster's, so you can play all the newest games, too. Only at your football headquarters, Dave & Buster's. Book your holiday party today. 42 to 29, Oklahoma State, 2.17 to go. Javon Boykin can only watch now. As the Cowboys would love to pick up one more first down. Horn Frogs out of timeouts. James Washington, what a game. Five catches, 184 yards, and three touchdowns. Well, he's special, isn't he? Yes, he is. Third and four. And a handoff to Carr, looking for the first down, and he won't get it. Denzel Johnson, Derek Kindred in on the play, but the clock cannot be stopped by TCU. Two minutes to go. Mike Gundy will likely let it roll all the way down. And then either burn one of his timeouts or just take the penalty before they punt it away. What a game for Oklahoma State. Their defense gave up 627 yards, but they were far more dominant than that here today. This team is going to be reckoned with down the stretch in the Big 12's November. 132 remaining in the fourth quarter. Zach Siner punting it away from the 20-yard line. Cavante Turpin back deep, and he has it. Inside his own 20 with 125 to go. Trevon Boykin coming back onto the field. The numbers for Boykin, he's thrown for 431 yards. Rushed for a couple of touchdowns. Thrown one touchdown, but he's also thrown three interceptions. You gotta wonder what a victory like this for an undefeated team is gonna do in next week's playoff ranking. Oklahoma State at 14, now with a, a win over TCU, who's 20 and one in their last 21 games. They have the 12 game winning streak in the Big 12. I think Oklahoma State's gonna jump up there all the way into that six or seven range. Boykin, side arms it out to Turpin, and you can't hold on. That committee made a bunch of excuses about strength of schedule in the first rankings. And while I understand that, up to this point in the season, now that excuse is no longer tolerable for a team out of the Big 12. This game, TCU, their record over the last couple of years, they boat race Ole Miss, the best defense in the country in the Peach Bowl. And now Oklahoma State has ended the 16-game winning streak. They're undefeated and should get the respect that they deserve next Tuesday night. Second down and 10. Boykin under pressure. And incomplete. Almost intercepted. And look how hard this Oklahoma State defense continues to play into the very end. A minute and 15 seconds left. The game in hand. And they're still flying around the ball. And they played 104 snaps of football. And they're still giving this effort. Emmanuel Ogba, one of the best in the country run around this field with his hair on fire. Third down and 10 of the 18. Boykin sidesteps over the middle and it's caught. The, this one is Jalen Austin with the grab. First down, TCU 106 plays. 
Boykin, incomplete. Boy, isn't it just so obvious that this inexperienced core of wide receivers without Josh Dotson, the chemistry, the timing, the trust, it's just on a totally different level than what Boykin looked like with his star All-American Josh Dotson on the field for the first eight games of this season. Dotson going out at the end of the first half with a wrist injury. He has not played in the second half. Second and ten. Boykin. And another interception. Guess who? Whitener. How about this? Oklahoma State. Whitener have a night on the biggest stage of your life. A walk-on transferred from Cal, earned the scholarship, and he has two picks off the Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback Javon Boykin. First time in Boykin's career he's thrown four interceptions. Boy, that committee's going to have a lot of work in front of him. This man, Mike Gundy, emotionless. Why? Because this is what he expected. He knew what he had. The rest of the country didn't. 9-0. A visit to Iowa State. And then Gus at home against Baylor and at home in Bedlam against Oklahoma. Wow. Those two teams will have to face this environment and more importantly, this defense on this field in the end of November. This Cowboys team is for real. This is not just some undefeated team in TCU. I ran down the numbers. Pistol Pete high five As he should be. He should. <laughs> Why do people sleep on Oklahoma State? Year in and year out, they exceed expectations. Had one of the youngest teams in the country last year. They finished the season on an amazing high note of winning that Bedlam game. Now they gain more experience. They get some transfers in here like Jordan Burton and Chad Whitener, Michael Hunter. They fill a couple of holes. Mike Gundy does a tremendous job with the chemistry of this program. And they're 9-0. and oh. This one downed at midfield. Stewart with the recovery. And let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper, one of a guy, play of the game. We're going to give it to Chad Whitener. I know Washington had a big night, so we were choosing between his three touchdowns and then the two picks from Chad Whitener. But when you put the exclamation point on the victory like Whitener did in that last series, you get the one of a kind Dr. Pepper play of the game. 21 points off four TCU turnovers for Oklahoma State. 49 to 29, 43 seconds remaining. Three sacks, six tackles for loss, four interceptions. A defensive day here in Stillwater for the Cowboys. And the chant here in Boone Pickens Stadium, 9 and 0. Oh. Boykin, another handoff. To Green, looks up the first down. The clock will stop momentarily with 16 seconds left. What a day for Oklahoma State. They came in prepared, fearless, confident against one of the top teams in the nation. Aaron Green again, doesn't get the first down, and that'll do it. There are only two undefeated teams remaining. In the Big 12 Conference, Baylor and these Cowboys from O.
K State. 49 to 29 the final. Oklahoma State knocks off eighth ranked TCU. There was a quiet confidence about Mike Gundy yesterday when we spoke with him. All right, let's go downstairs to Molly McGrath with Coach Gundy. All right, thanks, Gus. Coach, you said that it's impossible to stop Trevon Boykin, but you came pretty close to it. What did your defense do to render him ineffective for most of this game? Well, we just played base defense and ran to the ball. And one thing I'd mentioned to you guys, that I thought we have really good team speed. And it takes a lot of speed to be able to run him down. The, the defensive coaches had a tremendous game plan. And then offensively, we we're able to protect and throw the ball down the field. So the players just bought in and had a great week of practice. I'm very happy for them. Speaking of your offense, at times you guys were scoring at will. Mason Rudolph with a career-high five touchdown passes. Where did that explosiveness come from tonight? Well, we're, we're still not as good running the ball as we need to be, so we have to be able to throw it down the field. And our receivers went and made some plays, and our protection was good. And these guys just like to practice hard, and they like being around each other, so we're very proud of them at this time. Coach, biggest win of the season. Gus wants to know if we can get a smile out of you. Well, I'm smiling inside, Gus. So, but uh, this is a great day for the Oklahoma State people. It was very loud in here, and I'm proud of them. It's a really good time for the, the tragedy we had. And the, and the other families, so it's really a special time for Oklahoma State. All right, congratulations, Coach. Gus, back to you. All right, thank you very much. Got a little smile out of Coach Gundy. His team playing so well. 49 to 29, the final. Coming up after a short break, we'll get you to Los Angeles for more college football coverage.